I'll just start off. Okay. So, so my number 10, um, this is definitely some like vacillating here because I'm, you know, there's, there's a number of, I, I have to say, it's so close for me to put Tenet. I so want to put Tenet <laughs> just because it's like, you know, in terms of just movies that have given me the most enjoyment this year, uh, <laughs> it's definitely one or two. And also, I feel like that Tenet really has solidified. I don't know if I ever felt like embarrassed about saying Christopher Nolan is like my favorite or second favorite filmmaker, but <laughs> but Tenet to me it solidified it in an odd way because it's sort of like even at his absolute worst, most messy, convoluted, and embarrassing, <laughs> it's still more enjoyable than almost any movie I've seen this year. Right, right. But in good conscience, I don't think I could put it when you know I'm not putting like you know the father minari or um you know uh, palm springs vast of night a lot of these movies i really liked um on my list um i don't know by the way how, how many movies total do you have did you see 2020 movies i mean you just pulled up the list i like think i only saw like 15, 15. So. <laughs> yeah i got up to about 70 give or take which is it's pretty impressive which is, yeah for most people <laughs> for it's like oh it's pretty high but for me i mean like the last few years it's been of 150 or something so yeah but for low. 2020 i mean that's that's a significant size i still didn't get to see i want did either of us see inucci's movie no that's funny we, yeah I know, that movie just sort of fell through the cracks i guess yeah. but there's other stuff i wish i could have seen but um i think i think for 10 what i'm gonna go is is probably the other most just pure fun movie uh of the year which is the invisible man hmm. and um one of the last movies i saw I think it was the last movie I saw at the Grand Lake, actually. Yeah, I have my dad. And um, it's just a brilliantly made movie. It's just so much fun. It's exactly the type of movie I like. It has this sort of creepy psychological thriller atmosphere. Mm -hmm. um, Elizabeth Moss is just... Every movie she does, every movie Elizabeth Moss does, is she's in, in, insanely great. Mm. And um, it's a great movie about... Um, like manipulation and and gaslighting and people not totally. being like uh, it's I don't know if you say it, like not being believed but it's but it's sort of like it 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 puts you in the subjective experience of someone who's like you know screaming and people are like well, what are you talking about like yeah you're you're the one who's crazy and it's and it's such a brilliant way of of taking what could just be a thriller and making it feel like it's something a little bit more. Um, uh, interesting, I guess. Well, and in, ter in terms of just the pure concept, you can see how it would work, right? You know, you, there's this, you know, we can, can we go into spoilers, I guess? Uh, uh, you fine, go for it. A little bit. Um, well, you know, so the the plot centers around a, a, her husband who's who dies, quote unquote, mm -hmm. uh, but is actually alive and in an invisible suit. Mm -hmm. um, and she is trying to convince everybody that he is still alive and he is not, de in fact, dead, in, mm -hmm. is in and an invisible, invisible suit. And, uh, and everybody is looking around at her like she's just the most nuts person in the world. Yeah. And, and sort of the crux of that concept um it's it's almost like a weirdly um uh it's like a very straightforward movie in terms of its structure yeah. um and which is not a knock on it at all it, it serves this movie perfectly um because you know about about a uh, two-thirds of the way into the movie the, the pinnacle of of her being crazy is that she is essentially framed for killing what is it her sister or uh, yeah oh yeah 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 that's right. um yeah so she's she's framed for killing her sister in public yeah and it is yeah. the she's most holding the knife it is the most like insane like jaw-dropping sequence it is, yeah where yeah. you're like holy fucking shit it's it, <laughs> yeah I, th I think that movie actually it also it's funny because it's like it gets it's like the not believing the victim movie and then it's also like the falsely being falsely accused yeah movie. It's, it hits and, both of and, the, and, yeah, the terror i have to say like <clears throat> that's like always been and way before like me too movie or anything i've always been like a, a um being falsely accused of something always I, that would like drive me crazy when i was a little kid i, I ever told you the story about <laughs> so stupid i have the story about the swimming pool I don't know where where I went in um you know I always had much respect for authority but I went down a water slide and I, I like it somehow the the momentum flipped me around and I ended up on my stomach I came out on my stomach mm. and the lifeguard's like you can't come down on your stomach you got to go on your back and I was like no no I didn't mean to I didn't and like yeah yeah sure you 
And I was like, uh, I was so mad. And I went under the water and I gave them the middle finger under the water <laughs> where she couldn't see because I was so upset. And uh, yeah, so it's always th- th- that whole part of the movie really like gets to you and me in particular. But yeah, w- w- where for me, I think, th- I mean, it, I, I really loved the movie. I thought it was like, it, like a third of the movie is like a straight horror movie a third of the movie is a straight um like thriller kind mm-hmm. of like almost so i don't want to say like espionage but it, it almost is what like a, kind of a well investigative yeah yeah, yeah yeah um the detective thriller i guess uh and then the last third which i think is the weakest part of the movie is is kind of a a goofy comic book movie in a lot of ways. You well, know, a little like, bit, but it's that part's still fun. I love the thing with the kid and everything at the end. And uh, I don't know. I mean, I, the, the the last scene of the movie, I'm like not sure if I totally like. It's like it's a little like goofy, but um, no, I, I love the thing, the stuff at the uh, the asylum and that whole thing. That, yeah, that was no, totally. Yeah. I mean, it was very. It's very like Terminator too. Like you can definitely see. Yeah, it. <laughs> yeah. But it's really that guy is really good. He's a really good. Uh, he's a good horror filmmaker and action director. Um, and, and I was, I it was, it was so interesting because like watching this movie, I was like, I was like, wow, this is like totally, totally just like a a sci-fi horror movie, and mm-hmm. you don't get those. It's very rare when you get like one that's super successful or that does it really well. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would say this is the best one since. Uh, uh, I don't know. I kind of put in the peel. It's a little like in the peel yeah, category. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess it's so. sort of yeah. like, you know, talking about important things, but also uh, just a great pure thriller. Yeah. Um, um, no, I, I thought it I thought it was totally fun, totally enjoyable. Um, like like you said, I didn't I didn't personally love the ending. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it could have just been a little stronger in terms of like wrap the conclusion of the story. I understand they wanted the the empowering moment uh, oh but but it's uh, well, like yeah it just feels like yeah that, that, it, that it feels fine. weak in terms of of like compared to the rest of the the how strong the rest of the filmmaking was um yeah it's fair enough i mean i don't know i was okay with it but in any yeah. case um so what's I, your number 10 my number 10 is um judas and the black messiah um oh, okay now we can says a lot about your uh the my list you yes saw. exactly yeah. yeah um yeah so th- this movie was interesting because uh almost in the same way um that i liked invisible man i i kind of liked this movie too in that same way okay. um where like i actually kind of enjoyed the 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 like straight th- thriller elements of it okay. um oh we should explain really quickly it's just it's about fred hampton the black panther leader yeah and the man who was a fbi informant who was sort of undercover in yeah the black Panthers. yeah um and i liked the i liked sort of the operational side of things i almost wish that was the entire movie because because man uh, the the worst part about the movie for me was um it it gets like really slow in the middle <laughs> like really slow yeah um yeah and and like i don't know i think the setup is really fun mm-hmm. uh you know he's in the bar and it, he's like impersonating the fbi yeah i like, I like Jake, the introduction you know. of um, o'neill yeah you know and and so the and then the the best parts were sort of the interaction with him and uh todd i'm just gonna call him todd yeah um, Fleming. <laughs> always nice um, to see you know that that was that was my favorite part uh, of the movie, and then and then sort of the tension of um, him being the 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 sort of imposter. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as like the rest of the movie, I thought it was. I don't know. I I thought it was like kind of unremarkable where it ends. Um, yeah, I don't know. Should, should I just say what I think? About yeah, this go movie? for it. Go for it. Yeah, because because. I I don't know. I mean, it's again, it's sort of like Nomadland, where it's 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 definitely not a bad movie, but I was I was left very just like completely meh to yeah. this movie. I, I don't really um the things there there are great aspects of the movie. I think I think the most being Daniel Kaluuya is great, amazing. Yeah, um, I think the script is just like not super strong, so it's not like a great. 
the characterization of both of them is not amazing, but just in terms of like charisma and the scene to scene, he, he's just electric yeah. in the movie. Yeah. Um, and I, he's probably going to win Best Supporting Actor, and, and frankly, that would be great. Now, he's been it's amazing. Five years ago, we didn't even know who that. Guy I know, was. yeah, and he and his, his career is just one exploded. of the most exciting people in movies, and he so he's wonderful. And and um, and Bobbitt, Sean Bobbitt, the cinematography is is Amazing, terrific yeah. in the movie. Um, and yeah, and I, and I like the sort of yeah some of the kind of uh, thriller elements. There's like a whole shootout sequence that's pretty well done. I mean, there there's a lot of you know pretty good scenes, but I just felt like there was again, it's a movie that landed to me with no impact. You know, also there's like a rally scene where Kalilia gives a speech and he's like saying he's a revol, I am a revolutionary. <laughs> that, that, that like great, uh, but other than his, his sort of vague guilt, the the informant character who's you know well played. Lakeith Stanfield's very good as he always is, but he just is not. There's not much character there. Right. Exactly. Um, yeah. Hampton is a much more interesting character and a Kalilia's character and and. So and, 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 and they nothing. almost try to make the change in the middle of the movie too. They almost try to make the like halfway through you get more of, uh, and it's like it's 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 weird because like it's like they were unfocused in terms of like where they were trying what they were trying to do. That's yeah. what I mean. I I wish it was just sort of the just the thriller elements and not yeah. like I I don't know. There was it it felt like there was an. I, I, it felt like they were trying to split things. You yeah, know? I, like yeah, you almost wonder if they were like, oh, we maybe we should, you know, you know, people are gonna be like upset that we're just making the movie about the rat and not about Hampton. So right, maybe you need exactly, to give him yeah. a better. It, but it's sort of it's sort of unbalanced, and it almost it wouldn't matter either way, just because there's not. I think a big part of also just the connection between them is not very strong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, there's it doesn't you know a, a great movie of you know a betrayal like that. I mean, I, I, the obvious comparison is is uh, assassination of Jesse James. You know, you feel much. There's much more characterization of both independently, and of the connection between them. And and you know, when the betrayal happens, it feels. And it's not a spoiler because it's the title of the movie. Uh, <laughs> you know, it it it, it feel you feel like the 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 tra- oh, and then of course the <laughs> the best one is the Irishman. Uh, sure, okay, yeah, that's yeah, of course. I actually um, I think the Irishman is a great one to bring up because because like it's it's very clear that they have like. Um, the the they are the per, the central and the personal connection between each other and the you know the two groups that they represent. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, in this movie, it, you don't get that really. Yeah. Um, what an Irishman and Jesse James both have something in common, which is they're both like whereabouts uh, three hours about three hours long. So it's, yeah, yeah. It's uh, I, I I almost think if this movie was a lot longer, it could have been. I think I think they just needed more time for you to like just like live with the characters. I felt like everything in the movie was just about plot. It was about like this the telling the story. Yes, it feels yes. weird to say like, everything's about telling the story, but but it felt very just plot driven where rather than showing you uh you know the two characters maybe just sitting i mean there are a few scenes with him and the the girlfriend which is also kind of but, underdeveloped but that's what but, that's what i mean is yeah. like they focus a lot on sort of his connection with the girlfriend and the connection with some of the people around him but he, yeah. it uh, it doesn't yeah I, it doesn't feel fleshed out it doesn't and feel o'neill like, he's like he has no personal life unless i'm forgetting something yeah i mean it's, it's I don't sort know. of weird how he's <laughs> sort of the main character it's very funny how also the oscars how they're both for supporting that's so funny <laughs> i mean i i know category fraud has always been a thing but i've, I've never seen him get to the point where it just you say both of the main characters are supporting that's just so funny but uh you know, I don't know. I mean, I understandable for you to have it on your list just because I haven't seen you're that not much. Put yeah. Artemis Fowl, but right. Um, I don't know. I, I what I what I felt was strong about it was was sort of the um, it was the maybe the smallest part of the movie which I wanted more of. You know, mm-hmm. which is sort of the cat and mouse game. Um, I I don't know. I almost wanted also the. I mean, it, it, it's possible that it could have worked way better as a miniseries. Um, 
Mm-hmm. Potentially, I don't know. I I feel like I've I find my saying uh, myself saying that more and more nowadays. But mm-hmm. it's kind of true with like yeah. with these sort of a, they're they're like expansive stories, you know. Like mm-hmm. like this is not we're talking about like a uh, a plot from the FBI and like a rat and mm-hmm. you know and this figure who also has his own arc and storyline. Yeah, yeah. And it's like you can't do that in two hours. You know, you can't really do yeah, that. Yeah, that's um, true. Y- it's it's much easier to do a, a story like that in like an eight part miniseries on HBO. You know, right. like like that's that's where I wanted this to be, and I just didn't. I don't know. It it didn't it didn't get there for me where it could have. Um, I I did love the scene, uh, the shootout scene with with them in the window like that. That was awesome. That, that was pretty. Yeah, and the fight that was that was pretty well done. Yeah. Um, it's also funny to have this on on your list because it's technically a 2021 movie. At least I'm counting it as such. Yeah. But it's but it's in the Oscars, so it's fair. What would be your number eleven for the record? Did you have any? Um, would it be Nomadland or something like that? I don't know. It might be Nomadland. It might be Tenet. Might be. Tenet's not on your list? Uh, no, it's not on Cameron, my list. Cameron, how could you put Judas but not Tenet? Come on. Come on. <laughs> I've been saying oh, for God. months I don't like that movie. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. Um, yeah, if you want to go to number yeah, I'll do my nine. number. My, so my number nine is a movie called The Assistant, which did, I don't know if you I did not see this. Um, this is a movie I saw... I also saw this in theaters, actually. Uh, or, it's a very early 2020 movie. And it's definitely very much inspired by, um, you know, like stories of working with Harvey Weinstein and people of that mm. sort. I mean, it is a movie studio, and it's about a it's about a very low-level, uh, you know, assistant who does sort of just like the work, you know, makes coffee for people, you know, takes out the garbage like that Hollywood sort of making a mo- making movies about themselves. Again, yeah, but like as always, the least <laughs> glamorous. I mean, it is it is so not. I mean, you, you make that joke, but it is so not a Hollywood. It is so stripped down. Yeah, unglamorous, one set, um, minimalist filmmaking. It's also funny because I remember at the theater when I saw it. Um, I was sitting there, I, I get there early, and then a, an old woman come, comes in. She walks in, and she just sort of stands there and looks at me, and she says, given the Harvey Weinstein sentencing, I figured this was the film to see today. <laughs> and then she sat down, I was like, okay, whatever you say. I mean, if that's not an argument for the existence of movie theaters, I don't know what is. <laughs> it's a beautiful moment. Um, so me and this old lady watching this this. Very, it's like you know, eighty minutes, just like, just a sharp movie, and it's a filmmaker who is it's her first, first feature film. She's done a couple of documentaries, I think. And um, by the way, we're not saying the names of these. <laughs> Kitty Green is the name of the filmmaker, and Lee Wanell did Invisible Man. Whatever, they can look uh, it up. They yeah, have they, the internet. Yeah, who cares? Um, but this, so this this movie, um, I I thought you know, th- there's always the question with these sort of things with with sexual harassment in the workplace of you know you always sort of put yourself in this situation and think about like you know why wouldn't you 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 sort of ask the question like you know are people just predicting their own careers why don't they go why don't they you know and this movie really shows the kind of both the oppressive atmosphere of having someone like this sort of hovering you never see the boss you never see the guy you never see him do anything you just you hear about it it's behind closed doors it's just a thing that's in the air Mm -hmm. and you see how someone would feel powerless and would be completely, you know, uh, would just sort of put your head down and not not do anything and and just go about your job. And and it's very, you know, it's a very um, a, you know, movie that's just about sort of process and and you just see her doing a lot of mundane things. But it's, I think, everything in the movie is carried by. A great performance by Julia Garner, who, if you might know as the, um, she plays Ruth in Ozark. Mm-hmm. And um, everything is, you know, even once her just, you know, washing dishes or whatever, it's, it's you're seeing her face and you're seeing the conflict and the, the sense of sort of hopelessness and powerlessness and, and seeing this sort of things adding up in her head of, of, of suspicion and guilt and everything, and it's just completely done with nothing. I mean, I, you know, it's it's 
of all the movies this year, it's the one one of the ones I saw the longest time ago, and and so much of this movie has just stuck with me of that mm. situation and that being in that sort of um, you know uncertainty, and um, it, it's 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 just it's a really unique and uh, powerful movie, and and yeah, just so much about just seeing her, her reactions to these things, and and. Um, I, I highly recommend it uh, to you and to anyone listening because it's 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 you know very very small movie you know I, I think they actually did it on half of the bag which is kind of surprising yeah but um it, it's it's a movie it's it's too bad it didn't get more I mean it's not surprising but it's too bad it didn't get more attention Oscars and that sort of thing because definitely one of the best performances of the year and uh, and one of, one of the best movies of the year so. hmm. well my number nine is Mank. Um, and we already talked about this movie, so we don't really have Again, to talk Cameron, about it. <laughs> Bank is not better than Tenet, but anyway, I, I like I I did enjoy it better than Tenet. Yeah, definitely. This is shock. I've seen both three times, and and Tenet every time. I see it again. I'm like, this rocks even more. And Mank, every time I see it again, I fall asleep more. Um, but uh, I mean, you can. We've talked about this at length. But if you talk about it, what you. Why it's on your list? <laughs> I mean, I just I enjoyed it uh, a moderate amount, which makes it means it qualifies. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Um, Such a grim list. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to like talk about it that much. Oversell it, but no. Yeah. I mean, I mean to be fair, it is. It's a beautiful movie. It's probably gonna win cinematography. Um, it's sort of it's weird because as much as every time I see it, I'm bored. I I always find myself kind of wanting to watch it again. Because it's sort of, maybe it's like sort of sleepy and relaxing and it kind of has like a nice vibe to it. It's like an Ozu movie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that, but it's it's like, I don't know. It's it's sort of a fun world and, and you know, Gary Oldman's fun. Amanda Seyfried's really fun. and um, I, I don't know. know. It's, it's a movie. It's. All I'll say is it's a movie that's kind of let down by its script, unfortunately. Oh, God. How can you <laughs> um, say that? that was the saddest thing, by the way, the Oscars, that, that it. All the best picture nominees got nominated for script except for Meg. And I'm like, oh god, that must suck so much for Fincher. Yeah. Um yeah, it's just it's just not it's just not that well written at all. Well, it's also it's 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 just like structurally and in terms of it's funny how he does all these things that in every other one of his movies, like the cross cutting he does at the end, or the or the jumping from past uh, uh, past and present uh, you know in the social network it's genius gone girl like all these movies it's so brilliant and then this it like it deadens the last the last 30 yeah. minutes of the movie are are just like interminable what's what's funny is I watched um, I watched that documentary about the making of the social network right. um, and he goes through with Sorkin and he like he like picks every little thing apart he picks like words apart mm-hmm. um, and you could just see this like process of him being like razor focused on mm-hmm. on making it the best it can be and then I thought about Mank and I was like yeah, that's um, yeah. It doesn't feel like that doesn't feel like he did that. Precision. That. I don't know. I mean, I know he got other people to work on it, and he worked on it himself. But it's yeah, it's it's just it's just a little. Um, it's a frustrating movie because it it's not one that like I think about a lot, but mm-hmm. one that I'm like, man, I just I wish that movie was better. Um, mm-hmm. And it doesn't. But you might select it okay if it's you know. Oh yeah, no. Like you said, <laughs> Gary Oldman is enjoyable. Yeah. Not a very good character, but he's a, he's enjoyable. He's um, you know, the world and the cinematography is interesting. I loved Louis B. Mayer. Um, his character yeah, he's is just, like the best thing in the he's movie. He's really good. Um, Arnold yeah, Coward. but you know, in any case, I'm gonna skip this one and I'm gonna go to my. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Oh, is there anything else I want to say about Mank? I don't know. Oh, I remember now. Um, the um, I highly recommend. The DGA podcast, they you know they pair up directors or whatever, mm. and basically they paired up Sorkin and Fincher as for both movies for Trial and for Mank, mm. and the but in particular the one where Sorkin interviews Fincher is great because Sorkin is like you know like he's like a, he's directed twice and he's like trying to he's he doesn't know much about directing <laughs> he's trying to understand how Fincher did all this stuff and he's like oh Mank it's the best film of the year I'm like that's that's really sweet you'd say that Sorkin. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but also the funniest thing was he asked Fincher about his father. Apparently, his father like 
walked out seven and like hated it and he his father like like he's like offended by it and he he hated fight club really and he's like how how this isn't funny what's wrong with you you're sick interesting um, interesting and it's a very very interesting uh revealing sort of interview hmm. but anyway uh that was the only thing i wanted to mention well to make. maybe you should go to your number eight because we're technically still going in order yeah going back and forth um so my number eight um is red it's called red white and blue and it's the third film in steve mcqueen's small acts uh five part it's i mean it's sort of an anthology tv miniseries Mm. but really it's five films that are sort of collected by you know stories of um west indie community in in um england and I was a little underwhelmed, not like underwhelmed because it's mo- the- Alex Weedle is a little weak, but the other ones are very good. Um, but I was, I think maybe everyone was hyping it up so much. I was expecting them all to be wonderful. And right. the ones everyone says are really good were Mangrove and Lover's Rock. And Mangrove is like a courtroom thriller. Um, that's, you know, very just like solid, really good movie. Um, and Lover's Rock is like a almost experimental movie where it just takes place at like a dance party. And it's mostly just people like dancing. Um, and there's sort of a romantic story, which I think is kind of the weaker part of it is, you know, fleshing that out. I also felt like, um, I, I think Red, White and Blue to me was, was by far the best, maybe because of the focus. Like Mangrove is a little diffused between a lot of different characters. Mm-hmm. And Red, White and Blue is about John Boyega, who plays a, a, a man who, a black man who 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 decides um, John to Boyega join. plays a black man. <laughs> I was gonna say that's ridiculous, <laughs> but I, but it is it is part of the story. I mean that he's he comes from a you know of his father I, I, literally like I think in, in response to his father being beaten up by police, it, uh, he decides to join the police force because he wants to bring change from within it, and the movie. On top of just being like great McQueen craft and and I mean all of these films he's just I mean I think part of the disappointment is you know he's coming off of the Twelve Years a Slave Widows double feature and sure. so you can't help but be disappointed but he's he's always doing interesting things in one of them there's like a scene where a raid happens and there's a uh, I think people have talked about this but there's a colander on the floor. And it's just rocking and everyone like leaves the room and he just holds on it for like a full minute as it like slows down. And it's it's like gr- just like one of the great moments in any movie last year. And and in, and this movie, you know, it's filled with his sort of interesting touches and unique ways of, of shooting things. But um, it's a great it's a great movie about the kind of like the feeling of, of futility of, of, you know, I mean, I'm partly just the futility of, of being a police officer, even even outside of like being a police officer in a racist police force that you're trying to reform from within, and how it's just kind of like this um, feels like an impossible task. Um, but also the conflict he faces from his father, who who is horrified by him making this decision, and the sort of um, you know, slow process of, of a reconciliation between them. There's a wonderful scene where, where that's set to the, um, there's it, it, the whole movie is set to Al Green songs. And there's one Al Green singing, how can you mend a broken heart with his father? And it's just the silent scene where he, he leaves the camera in the car as they walk out. And it's like, just, just so beautiful. Um, it's, it's, it's very, just a very moving film. And Boyega is so good. I mean, he's so, I, I mean, I'm so, excited for this next like post star Wars. I mean, he got so fucking railroaded by star wars mm-hmm. man and and i'm just so happy to see like him go on to just be so great in this movie yeah and um and it also has i think like one of my favorite endings of the year where where it, it has a sense of like you know just this this the sense of futility the sense of like almost feeling i think he says something about like feeling like you know, sometimes I just feel like the earth needs to be scorched. I think that's the line. And um, I, I, I would be lying if I said this movie didn't personally resonate just because of, um, I don't know. Like, it's like, even though I'm sure he made this before the pandemic and is like not related to what's going on in the world, somehow the movie feels like 
it's I mean, it speaks to me right now of how I'm feeling. I'm just like I, I I felt in the last year looking at people, so many people, with such disgust <laughs> and such just a sense of like like the the world being godless and and things being you know completely um, unfixable. And seeing like it's it's weird to compare because it's like with my dad going through it's like this is the opposite thing almost or it's like a weird it's it's just not the same experience of, of the police officer as this guy, but but in both cases it's a sense of just like you can't win you can't you can't you know get out of the situation, but yeah it's incredibly I would recommend the whole series I mean it's, the whole thing is very you know uh, well done but this one is the really the really great one I think. Mm. You should see right. it. You should see it. Uh, where do you... Where, where are so this they? This is number eight. Uh, where are they? Trained? Oh, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, this is Amazon Prime. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, about inaccessibility. Again, it's like you have to... That's the, I hope they put it on Criterion. I'd love a Criterion box of this. But So what's your number eight? My number eight is Curveball. It's something interesting. <laughs> it is Color Out of Space. <laughs> oh, my God. You remember the that movie? The first film we saw in 2020. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, and looking back on it, if you asked me then, I would be like, no, that movie. <laughs> that just, wouldn't be on my top ten. <laughs> that movie wouldn't be on my top ten in a million years. Yeah, and here yeah. it is at number eight. Oh, my um, God. <laughs> Uh, I think about this movie kind of often, actually, which is really? one of the reasons why I put it put it on my list. Huh. Um, not just because it was, you know, a fun event going and seeing, but also because, like, there's. I think about that weird, uh, that weird puppet monster in the the two of them. Uh, the, oh yeah, yeah, the, like the, the, the practical, the freaky effects, practical yeah, effects yeah, are being super weird. Together, um, I've never seen anything like that. Actually, that's amazing. Yeah, I mean, it reminded yeah. me a lot of the thing. Like it just, yeah. it was totally, totally reminiscent of that. I think about yeah, uh, right. Nicholas Cage throwing tomatoes in the garbage. Oh, <laughs> Oh <laughs> I think about so um, my main criticism of that movie was I wanted more, um, which I think is actually a compliment in a lot of ways. Um, I think so. Yeah. But I wanted more craziness. I wanted more Nicolas Cage being weird and freaky. Um, I wanted it to just like totally like punch into that. Mm-hmm. Um, and what I got was like a little bit punching into that, but like I, I wanted to, I wanted like, ugh. yeah, it was I wanted a little to bit extract of it. And it was a little bit, it got a little just like too much. And it, when it got kind of like CGI stuff at the end, it, it yeah, was the CGI little, stuff ugh. was, was bad. But, um, the, the, oh, but I enjoyed a lot of it. I enjoyed like y- most of the stuff. Yeah. yeah um, uh, yeah, and like uh, I think the last sort of section in the house where it's like it's like he comes back and like he's he's like all fucked up and crazy. Yeah, um, right. And right. you know, there's like uh, there's almost like a little standoff, and like he's trying to go back and forth with the cops who are like trying mm-hmm. to make sure that he's he's okay. Um, and like that, that, I think that is like the best of the movie. Yeah. Um, yeah. And. Yeah, but I for the most part it's kind of it's kind of weird and bad in some yeah. ways. <laughs> I, I I I agree with you on all accounts, and I I think I I like this movie. I, I, this is the first one you've named that I think I would actually like give a good review to, even though it's like you know there's definitely it's it's not great by any stretch, but it's it's, no, it's yeah. fun. It's it's very good, and I always I always enjoyed Nicolas Cage. Uh, getting to do goofy things yeah well and i think one of the problems when when thinking about the movie is i was comparing it a lot to to mandy which i thought was way weirder way grosser way more nicholas cage being weird and fucked up yeah um, yeah and, and yeah and i wanted that out of it but and and what i got was something different in in a way mm-hmm. um because that movie is Mandy is much more psychedelic, in a, you know, it's like much more mm-hmm. experimental or, and or kind of like I, I would say successfully psychedelic. Yeah, it's trying sure, to be, sure, sure. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, and it's it's like it's very strange. Um, and it's like effective in its strangeness. Mm-hmm. And then at the at the end, you get this just awesome sequence of Nicolas Cage ripping oh, shit apart, yeah, just going, and it's the, the best thing duel. ever. Oh my god. Um, yeah. And then, but even the you think about the front half a lot where it's like it's like he's doing such weird things with colors and weird things with Mm -hmm. like with just like visuals and that sequence where she's on drugs in the house is like Mm -hmm. so long and so like arduous and disgusting and 
Yeah. Um, also, like, really visually interesting and cool. And, right. and, you know, his his face becomes her face, and it's, like, it's so freaky and weird. Yeah. Um, and I wanted that out of Color Out of Space, and I didn't oh, get okay. that. Yeah. Um, and Someone's face does become someone else's face. But that's not, true. Not it's in, in a different way. way. Yeah. yeah, in a different way. Um, and I almost wish this movie was, like, I if it was, like, 10% better... It would. It probably would have been more successful if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I mean, because like I think people saw the weird CG stuff, um, and like I don't know. They they were it. it some of it looks like kind of low budget and kind it, of it not good. Was, but um, but they didn't. But the yeah, the practical stuff is so good. It's like really, shockingly good. Really, that's yeah, that's disturbing. Very disturbing The goat, stuff. whatever, it, what, what was it? Llamas? Was it llamas? Alpacas? Oh, yeah. There was like the big... Oh, yeah. You see like shooting alpacas or something? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Um, yeah, that, it's just a weird movie. It's and I want an Alamo Draft House movie. Totally, movie. totally. <laughs> um, yeah, and I, I wanted more... It's also... It's, it's kind of my... It's one of my kinds of movies, too. Oh, definitely. Um, definitely. So, I don't know. I, I wanted it... I wanted more of it, but I think it's still good enough to be in my top 10. Um, and I I enjoyed it. I, I enjoy thinking about it a lot. Maybe if I went back and watched it again, I wouldn't. But I enjoy thinking about it a lot. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, well, that's, yeah, that's, a, I, I forgot about that movie, but that, that is a fun one. Um, I should also say that we're not. Because on like Letterbox, I put like devs at my number one, and we're we're mm-hmm. just putting those to the side. I mean, yeah. I've only seen two TV series this year, but those are like two of the best things I've seen: Ozark and Devs. Yeah, I'm sure that's the same with you. But we're sticking to movies. So okay, so for my number seven is a film called Shit House. Have you even heard of this film? No. Um, this is a uh, this. He might be younger than us, which is very <laughs> irksome. Uh, this guy named Cooper Rafe. Um, his first movie, first feature, I believe. Um, I mean, it's got to be. He's twenty-two or something, and he—he's the director, writer, and he stars in. He's the lead of the movie, and it's—it's it's a movie about a because it, it's a—it's a college movie. It's about a—it's a guy who's very homesick, I guess you could say, living at at college. And um, I, 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 this is a movie. They're just certain movies. They start, and you just know you're gonna. <laughs> them and for this it was the opening of this movie of shots of the college campus and this sort of like guitar score that's like in these sort of indie movies that were a little bit bigger like five years ago and then it's this guy he's sitting in his dorm with his roommate and the guy the main character who's played by Rafe is he has a stuffed dog on his bed which first of all you're just like well that's kind of an interesting detail of like is there only a certain kind of person who brings even I am I love my stuffed animals I wouldn't bring my stuffed animals to our dorm <laughs> right and um and he started he's conversing it with it to telep- telep- or it's like that he's having a imaginary whatever you want to call it conversation with subtitles with the dog <laughs> who's telling the him he needs to get out more and he needs to stop you know being so depressed or whatever i forget exactly but um it's very um i think the guy has said he's inspired by link later because it feels very link later he, he he you know he meets this girl who's a what's it called ra is that what you call it mm-hmm. the, the yeah. head of the and um who's who's uh, played by dylan galula who's one of these sort of like indie people. She's been in a really great movie called First Girl I loved and a few things in the last five years. And, and she's really great. And the first half or two thirds of the movie is them just walking around and talking. <laughs> and uh, as anyone who, you know, it's be no surprise to you, Cameron, that this is the sort of thing that I want in cinema. Just sure, people walking yeah. around. <laughs> and and it's just beautifully written. And, and you know, he's... I'm not sure if it. I'd sort of put him in like the Louis C.K. category of like he he's he's a very good actor and he's he's like perfectly good. I, I don't know if like you know he's the best or like you know maybe if some someone else would be better. I mean, it's very very personal thing for him. Like he right. he originally made this movie about his girlfriend and I think maybe they even acted in it together. Like he made a version of the movie. Um, I'm not sure if he, like the whole movie. Um, like in low budget with his girlfriend and like this is kind of like the 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 more refined version of it um 
Well, also what I liked about it was it, 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 um, I, I don't know if I've seen this sort of movie for like, you know, like, like the Lincoln movie is so many years ago now. And, and, and a movie that's this good and this authentic to like young people now. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if I've, I've seen one where the dialogue is as like sharp and natural. I'm not sure how much is improvised. I assume not too much, but it feels very natural. And I like the way that they're kind of, um, you know, you meet a lot of young people today. I mean, like, as I say, it's as if I'm not a young person. But, like, you feel like people are so kind of monosyllabic and, like, there's just not much going on. Um, but – and it's only after you really get to know uh, people. The people are very – it's like you're very guarded, I think. I think – I know maybe – maybe this is always the case. But you – people seem shallow when you meet them. They seem like they're just yeah. like, oh, we just care about this. And we're just, everything's ironic. Everything's a joke. And that's sort of, I like how the dynamic through the night sort of tracks from just sort of joking and it's whatever to something a little bit more um, um, revealing. And it becomes like very, very deep, sort of like um, deeply revealing about themselves. And... Um, but what's also interesting about the movie is it sort of goes into the next day and it goes into like how, you know, what what happens after this, which is sort of like what you don't see in Before Sunrise. They just go on the yeah. train. Yeah. And, um, and so that was very interesting. And, you know, there's certain things in the movie that I'm not sure, you know, all these movies are not, that I've named so far, I don't know if I'd call them like all like amazing movies. I, I haven't really been talking about the flaws of them because they're, they're pretty small. And this movie, you know, I'm not sure if there's certain things at the end that I'm like... A little iffy about but but i but i love these characters and i love just watching them and i, I thought it was just like um um just a lovely movie that i, f- I feel like i'm definitely going to watch many more times and i i'd encourage you to check out this one as well i don't know if you've seen any of these last three i've been talking about but no yeah no. I, th- I think i think you'd like it and and he's he's on his way to doing another movie i forget who's in it but yeah i look forward to seeing this guy this guy he's only 22 like damn Mm, pretty yeah. good it's, that's impressive i didn't i i don't know very many 22 year olds who could write a feature no <laughs> at all no no not uh not in this room certainly uh or maybe i don't know but uh so what's the you know, number seven i guess for you yeah um number seven is palm springs um which you quite enjoyed i know i like this um one, yeah. Yeah, I thought it was really fun. I I did see a thumbnail for for a, one of those YouTube video essays that was mm-hmm. like why uh, time loops are the new zombies, and I was like, oh god, um, what does that even mean? I know, I, I was like, know. this is the this is this seems like a trap. This yeah, I know this yeah. is trying to get me to click on it, but I yeah, <laughs> but I I will bait, resist. Um, in any case, yeah, Palm Sp- Palm Springs, I thought was just a lot of fun like I, I it was it was probably the most just straightforward enjoyable movie that i watched this year mm-hmm. where it was just like wow this is um relaxing i watched it twice mm-hmm. um this is relaxing and enjoyable and has kind of a positive spin on things mm-hmm. um is very like you like the characters, you know, nobody is overly cynical or disturbing or it, <laughs> gross. I would say the one thing I, I found the movie to be existentially very, at times it gets fairly despairing. Which sure. Yeah. Like, sure. And, yes. and, and like almost like nightmarish. Um, and I think it's accentuated by having the two characters together, which is kind of, the, yeah. I know it's, it's a innovation yeah. of the movie, but it's, it's the, what distinguishes it from something like Groundhog Day, where it's two characters living through a time loop. Yeah, exactly. Um, um, well, uh, three characters in, oh, in total, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, right. which is the, the great B oh, plot yeah. of this movie. Uh, it's so Simmons, fun. JK so Simmons, he comes in, he tries to just every time he just kills him in a horrific way yeah. because he's so mad. Yeah. And yeah. then, you know, and by the end, and this is why the movie is, is enjoyable and fun is because by the end you know um they get that reconciliation of of instead of him resenting uh being in the time loop he 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 accepts it you know he gets to this yeah wonderful scene uh with him at the end he gets to this point of you know of taking it in stride and saying this is my moment now you know Mm -hmm. this is my day Mm -hmm. um and and I found that really kind of really pretty touching in mm-hmm. in, a, in a sense, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, like you said, it does become existential in a lot of ways, where it's like, it, you know, we're we're in sort of we're stuck in this uh, this one moment. We can't really 
break ourselves out of things? Um, you know, what does it mean to, to go through sort of like the, the highs and lows of like being in a stagnant point in your life? Or, mm-hmm. you know, what does it mean to be uh, depressed because you can't change things around you? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And so like, it has all these, uh, you know, I I think I watched Groundhog's Day for the first time. Groundhog Day? Were you going to call me out on that? I wasn't going to, but yeah, you were. in my head, you yeah, read you my were. mind. <laughs> you <laughs> read motherfucker. my mind. <laughs> um, that was so weird. I was like, I was like I'm not going to say this. <laughs> and then you did. Um, wh- what is the difference? I don't know. Well, the, the title is Groundhog Day. It doesn't matter. It doesn't I don't matter. know. I just think it's funny how you... I swear on the podcast, every time on your podcast, you say either a name wrong or you say a date. Usually it's a date of the movie wrong. And I almost feel like you're doing it just <laughs> just to like like annoy me. Because I'm like, oh, God. No, I'm doing the prosecution it. prosecution didn't come out in 1958. Uh, it's like, I'm doing it t- t- because it's off the cuff. Like, yeah. That's, that's really sure. what it is. Yeah. Um, Groundhog's Day. Um, what about Groundhog Day? What, is, what are we going to say? Um, I feel like one of the things that you don't really get out of that movie is um it is the the i guess the like philosophical like um like what like they don't they don't really explore that element in in that movie um because it's not really about that you know it's not really about about the 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 focus of the movie is about him trying to to you know attract this girl and him trying to well it's about bettering yourself yeah exactly exactly i mean yeah. i mean there's a certain existential quality to that movie. but it's it's not it's not really the focus of the movie in a lot of ways i guess um, i don't know i don't know i really i like that movie a lot and i oh i i, I, I read like it to, too yeah saying like i don't know if it's not at all in the movie but but this movie to me had a darker even though it was like like very funny and ultimate and you know upbeat kind of like a very you know very as you guys said in your podcast, consumable movie. <laughs> it's uh, I, to me. It it. Went, I think it was partly also. It just there was such a like a. Again, it's coincidence, but the quarantine ness of of uh, yeah, twenty twenty. Yeah. The, really, you feel it in this movie, even though Definitely. I guess this weird like anticipatory thing. But it's sort of um, it 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 goes to a place where you like where it's it becomes uh, it's pretty horrifying in some ways. Um, it's a weird movie because I, I I when I saw it it was almost like a like a like a no notes movie like I was like you know like a college professor no no nothing not really any problem with it very good movie and it sort of is weird how it just sort of slipped out of my as we're talking about it and scenes from I'm like yeah that was really good but what, I think maybe it's like you see scenes from it out of context i hope it wasn't mike and jay because they were just very down on that movie for some reason i don't know what were they yeah they were like oh it's just like milk toast crap and i was like all right guys it seems pretty good to me (laughs) but uh but it was it was just a weird one where there's certain movies that you know you know like stick with you more you know from the year and like like the assistant or like if i talk about like how much i enjoyed watching the assistant versus palm spring like palm springs is so enjoyable um, but you know, it just, it's like, it sort of drifted. Oddly devs was like that too, which hmm. is weird because devs is like excellent, but I just felt like I stopped thinking about it the minute. It I kind of felt that way too. Yeah. I don't Why, know. What is that? <laughs> I don't know. It's weird. It's De- Palm Springs. Maybe more understand devs is weird though, because it's, I, I, at the time I thought it was his best thing yet. And now I'm like, is it better than Ex Machina? I don't know. I mean, well, I went back and watched yeah. Ex Machina. I still think it's better. Ex Machina is. Yeah, yeah, I, it it may well be, but um, but Palm Springs, uh, despite what I'm saying, is is really good, and it's not just like, yeah, I, I think it's it's both really fun, but also um, it, it 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 like all these time loop movies, they're all kind of about the same thing because they're all kind of about like, I mean, it's it's a little bit, it in this one's a little bit different because it's about like, like breaking out of the risk it's it's not it's less about bettering yourself though it is about that too um but it's like about like having to move forward in your life i guess is sort of yeah and the the tension of um being comfortable and being uh yeah yeah, being like the change maker exactly um 
and so yeah, I thought that was just really well done in that movie, and and uh, yeah, and Andy Samberg is great, and Kristen Milioti is really great. Yeah. Who I feel like I haven't seen since her. I guess she's in Wolf of Wall Street, but that's pretty small. She hasn't really. It's her biggest role since the Thirty Rock, I would say. Mm. Um, yeah, so, I don't yeah. know. I, I I think about that scene with with J.K. Simmons a lot. You know, where they kind of have that reconciliatory moment. Mm-hmm. Like, I it's it's. It's that's the scene for me that has stuck the most, probably. Mm-hmm. Um, just because I think it's really interestingly written. Like the whole story kind of leads up, or the whole B plot of the movie leads up to this moment. Um, mm-hmm. It it affects the character, the main character. Uh, yeah, it's like the and, turn, and it, yeah. You know, and and so it's like the, uh, it's it's really really perfectly done um, mm-hmm. and perfectly well set up. So um, no. I don't know. I I. I, it's almost a little hard to recommend that movie though, because you're like, oh, it's like Groundhog Day. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess the recommendation would just be like, it's not depressing or miserable like some of these other ones. You know, <laughs> I it's, guess it's one of the more fun, like accessible. Right, right, yeah. No, more than true. like The Assistant or Red, White, sure, and Blue sure, or something. Sure. But um, not that I would recommend those any less. But um, I don't know. I'm not really big on the whole like something has to be like absolutely original for it to be no no that's that's not what i'm saying i'm saying like you know the temptation is for people to be like oh well i've seen that before but it's different it feels it feels different if it's it's got a different tone um yeah but i can't say it's not like groundhog's day yeah and also it's a very good um another i think it's the director max barbacow's first movie as well which is pretty yeah pretty impressive uh, so shall I do my number six? Number six, my number six would be Bad Education. Ooh, which we've talked yeah. About. I we'll assume talk, this is on your yeah, list. That is. Yeah, yeah. This is really. It's a great movie. This is, I think, where we get into like the like, the 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 highest tier. Uh, well, not the highest tier, but like the the, you know, the the other three were I think were kind of interchangeable with like American Utopia, Vast of Night, you know. But these are the ones that were like these six are are where it's solidified in the list though i think in any other year almost none of them would be like, no know, yeah yeah i've never I've, ne- I, I've had a hundred percent like 10 flat out great movies every year at last 10 years and I, this is the first movie in 11 years and and this is the first time where i only have like three or something that education <laughs> is like somewhere between like very good and like flat out great it's really i think i've seen it three times and um I mean, we've talked about some like it's about the what the biggest uh, uh, fraud, case of fraud yeah. in, in a, a school district in history. Yeah, and uh, and Hugh Jackman playing the the perfectly uh, composed superintendent of this was it the fourth most uh, fourth uh, highest rated or whatever uh, school district in the state or what whatever it is he's trying yeah. to get them to number one and. Um, one of the best performances of the year. Definitely, yeah. I mean, it's it's a shame it was a TV. I mean, I don't really understand how there's what even is a TV movie now. <laughs> I know, yeah. But what does that mean? The the powers that be. It's a very strange. Decided. It's a strange movie because like it's not low budget at all. Almost like no, it's a it's like production. kind of a, a like a really well made movie. I think it's shot on film. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and then and it doesn't feel low budget. And then you're like, oh, it's just kind of small. And nobody's ever heard of it. You know, it's uh, yeah. like yeah, it's so t- many of these quote unquote TV movie. You know, yeah. And another one that's like you know, so many people. If you said Hugh Jackman giving a probably his greatest performance in a movie that's like sort of like a crime drama and you like rattle off who's in the cast like Ray Romano, Allison Janney, Rafael yeah, Casal. Exactly. And then people are like, oh, I'd love to see that. Oh, you have to have HBO. Oh, okay. You know, I mean, a lot of people have HBO, but I mean like, you know, a lot of people, you know, just regular people don't, own 40 streaming services yeah and nobody's ever heard of this movie and too. yeah people are like oh, forget it then you know and you kind of hear the name the name's terrible first of all and the yeah and uh, the po you see the poster and you're like oh, oh this looks worst bad. poster ever you know uh, <laughs> it's just yeah it's not very inspiring you know you to watch it but it's it's incredibly um on top of being like a just a compelling drama and being just like well crafted i think it's incredibly entertaining and, and cool. not like a comedy but it's but it's 
like you're riveted by it. I saw it with my mom and my grandma and they were like, like my mom's like, did you see what just happened? And my grandma's was like, oh my goodness. You know, it's yeah. like the, that sort of engagement with the movie. Um, and of course there's a whole thing of like the, the, the uh, girl at the school who's investigating the thing at the same time. Mm-hmm. And that yeah. whole thing is like really uh, Geraldine Vis- Viswanathan. She's wonderful. And all these, um, yeah. And, oh, and Allison Janney as uh, who's sort of the, who's the woman who first gets sort of discovered yeah. is, is amazing in the movie. And the sequence with all the board members where he's like trying to justify the, you know, yeah, what yeah, he's doing. Yeah, because they're like, we need to like, go to the police. And then yeah. they're like, and, and like, Allison yeah. Janney's like, like tearing things up in the background. Yeah. It's just, yeah. That's it's probably wonderful. the best. Yeah. It's probably the best scene in the movie, but, and then yeah, like Romano, man, I just like every time he's in a movie, he's just, you're always, I'm always happy to see him. He's so It's good. weird. He's become like a, <laughs> he's like, he's like, like Charles character. Lawton or something. Like, like a one character the, actor. Our great working, you know, supporting character actors. But um, yeah, we talked about this at some length. I mean, we don't need to go into that much, but it's, it's really a um, very, very good movie. Uh, Corey Finley is the director and this is his, he made a pretty good movie called Thoroughbreds. Um, uh, that that I saw whatever that a couple of years ago, and um, he's definitely solidly in the like. I'll definitely see whatever this guy makes. He's like really, it's 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 very like um sharp. Like it's it the, he yeah. you feel like everything he's like visualized. You know, it, it doesn't it feels there's such precision to the filmmaking, and um, yeah, really, and yeah, Hugh Jackman. It's too bad it's not an Oscar eligible movie or whatever because uh, did he lose to Ruffalo in the Emmys? It's like, oh, please. Uh, not as bad as Linny for Ozark losing to a Zendaya. Did you hear about that? No, no, I didn't. Oh, my God. Put a fucking gun in my mouth. <laughs> best, perfor- <laughs> best performance of, like, the year, maybe the decade. Like, oh, my God. Anyway, well, this is enough of this nonsense. Uh, uh, so what's your number six? Uh, my number six we already talked about, The Invisible Man. So Maybe maybe I'll go to my number five. I think it's, I think it's better to end on your number one, because my number one you haven't seen. Okay. So, okay. so I'll yeah, just go sure, to my sure. number five, which is um, a movie called Relic. This is a movie that is, again, just like a very, very small movie. Like I think they talked about it on Half in the Bag rather than immediate, but... It's, you know, a, a very, very, and it's a first time movie. It's a Australian, I think an Australian part Asian director named Natalie Erica James. Um, it's a horror movie. Well, yeah, you know, it's a, it is a horror movie. And it's about a, a woman who basically comes to visit her mother in the sort of like, you know, in her country house or whatever, sort of isolated house. Um a mother and a daughter who visit the grandmother who's sort of like in the early stages of dementia. And it's like the movie at the beginning, you feel like, wow, what a, a really great drama about dementia and like that, that sort of confusion that's starting to happen. Actually, you know, would make a good double feature with, with the father actually, in terms of being a very interesting way of portraying that. Mm-hmm. Um, but you almost feel like at first, and I think I might, enjoy the movie more the second time seeing what she's doing because the first time the haunted house kind of element of like supernatural stuff going on feels almost like an intrusion into the drama and like why is this i just you know i'd I'd be fine just seeing this drama and like why do you have to insert all this other stuff but as the movie goes on it she finds this like brilliant way of portraying the the interior of the mind like almost as the house Hmm. and and the confusion and and the sort of like um way uh the 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 way your mind sort of warps and closes off you know as as you as you lose your memory is is portrayed almost like in visual terms it's very very i I don't want to like spoil too much of how she does it but um it's very well done and and really unlike anything i i have seen before and um and I mean, it's 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 a deeply sad movie. I mean, it's a because it it really is sort of about the the decay of both mind and body, and about how like um, almost like how people are, you know, as you reach a certain age, are almost like your your body is like a decaying vessel that you're <laughs> trapped in, and and I mean, just just like such a creative definitely the best i mean a lot of great first features this year because hmm. kind of like 
you know, that's, those are the movies that are going to come out. Right, right. right. And um, I think that's this is the best one I, I saw. It's it's really a, a powerful movie um, and incredibly disturbing, too. That's sort of, This is the weird thing also of, like, it's, it's a movie I think it's hard to f- – people are – it's hard to appeal to people because it's, like, the people who want to see a really interesting movie about, you know, losing <laughs> your mind and, and the decay of old age – aren't going to want to see a movie where, you know, you see like decaying flesh and uh, bones cracking and sure, scary. Yeah. You know, even, you know, people I've recommended to are like, wow, that sounds really interesting. And they, they see the trailer <laughs> and like, well, I don't know about that. Right, right. Right. And then people who are like, want to see a horror movie or like, you know, might be caught off guard by the kind of emotion hmm. and, and, uh, you know, seriousness of this movie. Cause like even like something hereditary, which is like in the serious realm is kind of a goofy, it's it's more of a fun movie. I don't I wouldn't say it's quite tongue in cheek, but and I, and so it's weird to say. But it is more. It's not like it's not as grim as this. Oh, all right, sure. We're. I mean, actually, that's a weird example because actually, Hereditary is very Hered- grim. I mean, it's very but, grim. But yeah. but Hereditary, man, it's yeah, it's like Mary Poppins compared to this movie. I mean, I don't wow. know. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I've, yeah, I I watch Hereditary. I'm like laughing sometimes. So I don't, maybe I'm thinking more of Midsummer too, but. Anyway, uh, yeah, Relic, uh, really powerful movie. Hmm. Um, so what's your number five? My number five is I'm Thinking of Ending Things, um, uh-huh. which uh, I think we've talked about, right? Uh, yeah, we did an episode. Yeah, that, talk about another movie. Another about movie about old age and decaying. Age. Um, yeah, it's definitely one that I think has... Um, it's another one of these that's grown on me. I watched it again the second... Uh, after we talked about it the first time oh yeah um and it's really it's really been one that i think about more and more Mm -hmm. um just in terms of how weird and yeah it weirdly has like a lot of connections to what we're just talking about you know um in any case uh, yeah, and, and with the father too it's kind of like when yeah yeah Us yeah knives out and parasite came out the same year yeah yeah um no, yeah, they, they, this movie is just very strange, um, and <laughs> it's 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 totally like I don't know. It's the most like inaccessible Kaufman movie. Um, it's the most uh, probably yeah. It's the most like hard to recommend probably on my list. Where I'm like, I don't, I wouldn't say like. Oh hey, you guys should go watch this. You know, it's, it's, it's like it's frustrating because the reality, it's 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 it, almost forty five minutes of the movie feels fairly straightforward. I guess. I mean, it feels like, I mean, at least the first forty five. Or yeah, yeah, I would say sh- uh, there's some cutaways yeah. where you're like, what? But it, you know, you if, if you're just a person watching it, not knowing anything about it, you're like, okay, it's going along. But it's a little boring too in the in the uh, first. I, I mean, like you boring, you, you loved uh, you love the stuff with the I like, car. I like it. The watch it. I liked it watching it, it again. Yeah. Um, and I liked sort of all of the connections to what it, what actually happens in mm-hmm. the movie. Um, but I didn't like. I wasn't connected with it. Like watching it. If you were just watching it for the first time, I think you'd be thrown off by several things. Um, mm-hmm. And you know, just watching them in the car is yeah. not like. The yeah. most <laughs> sensational thing ever. No, no, um, but it's a great. I mean, it, was that my favorite scene in the movie? It might have been. I, I thought. I mean, I love the conversation. I mean, in a way, I like. I don't know. I hate to always be the guy with like David Lynch or Kaufman, where I'm like, just make a regular movie. You know, like it feels such <laughs> like a, like a ridiculous thing to say to these like great artists, but, right? But on the other hand, it's like as the, the movie's reality. What I was getting at was that was that it's difficult because the reality sort of starts to like slip away Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, you're sort of confused, but I mean, still it's powerful because you're, you know, it feels again, it's sort of like a, uh, almost an expressionistic way of, of showing, you know, aging and dementia and those sort of things. And also the movie is sort of about like, I don't know, like the emptiness of, of like your, your, uh, your mind and of your your cultural knowledge and your your romantic yeah. projections and all these different things which i completely there's definitely things about like you know the oh this character being real or not that i just totally <laughs> didn't understand the first and i i wonder if seeing it the second time it will come more into focus and i'll like it more or i'll go like no i still like the first part more and as it goes weirder and weirder i'm like 
But it's but again, it's I liked it a lot. I liked you know I don't like the last scene, but I really liked the whole thing at the school and the snow and Buckley is just wonderful, the actress and uh, and Jesse Plemons is really? probably, probably one of his better performances. Yeah, he's, I always, he's really good. I always like him, but and he's like the main. He ends up being the main character, which you yeah, don't well, you don't really know, right? Yeah, um, yeah, and. Yeah, no, that, that's why, that's another reason why it's just a weird movie. Like, you can't really recommend it, because you're like, it, it's, you totally are thrown off by halfway into the movie, um, mm-hmm. and you almost start to be like, wait, is this like a horror movie? Is this like a, is this gonna, like, freak me out? Like, is it, it is, is it weird? It is not weird in a conventional scary. sense, but it is haunting. Um, really, yeah. And then by the end, you're like, you're just overwhelmed by the... <laughs> The weirdness of it, yeah. You know? Yeah, you've just been taken on a on an on an LSD trip where your your mind goes out the window. Yeah, yeah. Which I which I like to some extent, and I like the whole. And I actually really like the the last scene too. Dance. I like the um, dance part, and well, I like um, the singing. I like him singing. I, really, I always yeah, find I, <laughs> I I kind of find it like. Um, I don't know. It's 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 very strange. But like I I I like that. I I don't know because like the song the song is reminiscent of what of what his character goes through. Um, and if you know anything, what what's the? Um, oh, it's Oklahoma. Yeah. Um, it's from oh, Oklahoma. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the plot of Oklahoma, um, the that character is like the that's the villain's bad guy song oh. um if you if you didn't know okay um and it's it, it's when like he's he's turning to like he he's saying like oh i want this woman you know um and like i'm gonna do whatever i i can to to get her basically mm-hmm, um mm-hmm. and it's totally it's, it's sort of in a different context in this movie but it still has that same that same element of being like Oh yeah, he, he's just he's not he's a weird guy, you know. Like right, he's right. super weird. Um, I mean, it, yeah, we talked about him. So yeah, no, it's 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 definitely a runner up for me, and and it may climb in my estimation if I watch it again. So I got number four next, and um, I'm bummed you didn't get to see this, but I hope you do some point. Uh, is Soul, which is. Pete Doctor of Pixar's mm-hmm. latest film, a man who is, uh, I was going to say notorious, but that's not really the right word for it, who is I'm, maybe the best batting average of anyone in movies. I mean, anyone who's made more than like two movies. Um, it's a little weird, uh, and, and I hope we get to talk about this in greater depth when we've both seen it, but I, I can't, it's weird to say that it's like a letdown when it's like with the top five films of the year, and like an unbelievable achievement in many ways. But on the other hand, I'd say it's, it's the only Pete Doctor movie that I would say I don't like flat out love. Hmm. Um, and I don't want to like get into it too much and like set up your expectation, but um, I feel in, in, in broader terms, I feel like he is a little bit, I, I feel like you're starting to see a little bit of the seams of, um, the limitations of Pixar, I think. And I think I, I think that the company is such a kind of a restrictive, not restrictive, but everything is so kind of like um, conceived and conceived and there's such a kind of a, a not like boardroom feel, but kind of a, um, no, it, 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 it's, it, I mean, it's not like that. I mean, it feels like his vision. It's not like the other Pixar movies that feel kind of like more like this general thing. But I feel like you're seeing a little bit of, you know, Pixar has a the formula. People sort of are starting to see it now, and it's a little bit. You're starting just to see a little bit of the staleness, and this, of course, is outweighed by brilliance and creativity of this movie. And uh, I'm to briefly, I mean, try to explain this movie. It's it's a movie about a a band teacher who's sort of dissatisfied with his life. And him, on the night he gets his big gig, basically, he falls into a manhole and basically dies and enters the soul world. And um, so it's it's a movie about, like, where do souls get their personalities? And um, 
what makes us who are who we are what is the uh you know basically what is the purpose of our lives and and also about kind of like the distinction between like the things we're passionate about and the things that give us purpose in life and how those things sometimes are distinct entities and i mean it's and it, this is where i'm talking about the limitations i feel like there's a little bit of the like of the themes and the hand holding and also kind of like the injection of humor in this movie where that's where I'm starting to see the sort of the Pixar thing where it's like, he has to have these things in it because it's a film for kids. Right. right. But I, to me, I'm like, and it's great. Like it's better than almost any film you could see this year. But I just feel like I, I want to see him like take the next step. I want to see him. I don't know if he can do this in Pixar of like, they can just like, make a film that's you know the way like Miyazaki and Ghibli do where it's more like we're making a film for adults you know Mm, yeah um you know but I would love to see something I or or maybe just needs to go off on his own or go to another I don't know I mean I'm very concerned about him because he's talked about how he likes sort he's sort of has settled into this role of mentorship and how and also the 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 I forget if it was Jim Morris or who was it Pixar who said this whole thing about how all the guys who originated Pixar are older now and they don't have their finger on the zeitgeist or whatever r- ridiculous assertion he made about how Pix- it should be about the younger, newer directors. I'm like, bullshit, man. The younger, newer directors have given us nothing but basically mediocrity. Yeah. And uh, I mean, not that like, <laughs> not that Lasseter was hitting home runs in his later times. I mean, I don't know if he'll ever direct a movie again, but um it, to me, to me, it was it was those guys. It was it was Stanton, Unkrich, Lassiter, Bird, and Doctor, and I don't know. Doctor's the only one who seems like he's he's stuck around and he's still doing stuff. But being the the creative head of Pixar, it's sort of a weird position where he has to, um, you know, he has other responsibilities now. Right. And I I I can't imagine. It's sort of like Tarantino where he says he's going to retire. I can't imagine someone that brilliant not. Um, basically continuing to make movies i just can't imagine like be it being you just being made for this you know i mean he he really is like one of the most audacious brilliant filmmakers alive right now and i think and this movie even with my like small small qualms uh reinforces that because it's just it's like beautifully crafted movie in every way deeply moving film beautiful score by uh, there's a jazz score by john baptiste and then sort of a otherworldly ethereal score by trent Reznor and atticus ross um there's a scene in this movie that um it's it's, it's sort of a the the sequence of which the whole movie turns i'll say and anyone who's seen it will know what i'm talking about and it's it's the best scene of any movie this year. I mean, like, not even, like, a contest. It is, like, one of the most beautifully crafted, one of the most just, like, deeply moving things I've ever seen. And and maybe the best piece of film music Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross has ever written. Um, it's incredible. And... And then it's you know and 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 from there the movie you know goes in other places and sometimes you're like oh god it's like you feel like it has to explain itself a little bit for the kids or whatever but then it goes to this other thing where it's like he's portraying the you know the world of the soul and and of like lost souls another thing t- the movie sort of talks about is how how your your the things that weigh you down and your obsessions and the things that give you passion and life are like almost like exist almost in the same plane basically mm. and how you know these things that are you know it basically it's like the zone you you you're in when you're you know a great basketball player or like writing a novel or something playing music that you know being in the zone is like the same zone you can get into when it becomes obsession and it just becomes work and just like basically clouds you and, it, and the movie literalizes it with like people you know under basically you know you know uh, under sand and like you know turning into these kind of like monstrous entities and um yeah it's 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 a just a beautiful movie um and uh, I, I i i may this is may be a movie i see again and sort of you know, like many movies of the last few years, you know, you you have qualms about it, maybe. But then, like, they're like, what's Bond Time in Hollywood? Is a movie like this, mm, where yeah. those qualms, after seeing it a few times, you're like, 
I don't know. It kind of just falls away. Yeah. And that might be the case with this because it's real. It's 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 there's you know there's no one making movies like this and and I just want I want I he I feel like it's he needs to it's like the next step um, because he's he's just on another level of anyone. I mean it's really. I mean, I, I'm more excited, you know, when there's a new Pete Doctor movie announced this year. I, I'm more excited than like, you know, the new Clint movie or the new, you know, um, even like Spielberg. Like, is to me less exciting right now as a director. Yeah. Than yeah. than Doctor's work. But anyway, so what's uh, what do you got? Yeah, my number four is Minari, um, mm. which I found to be very. Um, very touching in a lot of different ways. Um, it, it it's another like nomad land where i like i just felt like it was so honest um mm-hmm. and it and it felt very the the parts that i loved about the movie was that it, like it never made anyone um like a villain in, in mm-hmm. a way that it could have mm-hmm. um and and i really i really thought it was interesting how it balanced sort of um the weirdness of going into a new place the sort of uh, peculiar attitude of of people around you, you know, adjusting to your new environment, um, and also sort of the the kindness of strangers and the humanity mm-hmm. of that, um, and you know, and it felt like it was a movie almost out of a different time in a lot of ways, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, like it felt like a movie from from like the '90s or or mm. um, like a, a small movie from from an earlier time mm-hmm. because. It was so devoid of many of the things that you might find in a movie like that nowadays, um, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I, I'm not sure if you're making an insinuation here, but I, I think it was my mom was. I don't know how like this is this might this might sound sort of rude to say, but like my mom when I told my mom, oh it's really good, she's like, so it's not like crazy rich Asians. That's what my mom said <laughs> because I think there's like this sort of expectation with like when there's a big movie about people of color. That it's gonna be this some kind of like, I don't know, uh, celebratory or or uh, condescending sort of thing, yeah, or, or or just like you know a mediocre movie that everyone praises, um, or, or even something like um, uh, in a similar fashion, which was uh, what was that movie with Aquafina. Um, farewell yeah yeah where it's like it's like that movie was was touching and it was personal but it did have that same a very similar sort of like oh you know aquafina and you know and it's like it, it, it broke the kind of authenticity of it a little yeah bit. um I mean, I don't, you know, it's it's obviously we don't want to just sit around, you know, compa- just comparing all the all the big Asian movies. <laughs> no. I mean, that's not what I really <laughs> no, mean by no, that. No. But I more mean just like that the movie is, it doesn't feel like it's a person who is, um, I don't know. It, it, it just felt like just so kind of like a, like a humble movie, just telling a story, yeah. just telling a personal story. Um, like, you know, like all of the great movies this year. And it wasn't really... I don't know. It, it it wasn't so like I don't know self conscious. Maybe some movies are about about like it's my personal story. So I you know I want to make sure everyone really. I mean the character who is I assume the surrogate of the of the director, the little kid, mm-hmm. is I mean he he's he's kind of a little shit in some of the scenes, man. <laughs> yeah, he has the, the but one he's, thing with the uh, he's so you funny. Know what I'm talking about yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I literally <laughs> was like like out loud in the theater was like oh no oh no like, I know yeah that. and. Uh, yeah, it's it's I, wonderful. The, the three other people in the theater gasped, <laughs> you know. So that you can tell that's that's the crowd, you know, one of the yeah. sort of crowd moments. Sure, yeah. Um, I gotta say that the, the um, I'm trying to remember uh, Yoon Yoo Jung, who's, who's I think is her name, the uh, actor who plays the grandmother, the grandmother in the movie, is wonderful. wonderful. Yeah, and I really hope I really hope she wins. I, this is one is definitely another like uh, very close to the list um, for me. I don't know if I. This, I don't like have massive complaints about the movie. I don't know. There might be some like dramatic things that are maybe seem a little contrived towards the end. I, I don't know. Um, but certainly of the nominees, it's one of the ones I'd be happy. Yeah. To see win like yeah, this and too. the father and Sound of Metal. And Stephen Yoon, I think, does a really good job as playing sort of the. Yeah. All, uh, he's 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 an interesting character because he's so. 
um, subtle when you compare it to like dads in like Hollywood films, you know, mm-hmm. where it's like it's like dads typically, you know, they're either portrayed as sort of distant or um, like kind of buffoonish or, mm-hmm. you know, not not very um I don't know, or or like, or just bad, you know, mm-hmm. like I don't know, I don't know what it is, um, but dads in in American movies, I feel like are just so like, tr- like trite. They're they're very like cartoonish. Um, A lot of movies, yeah. yeah. And, and he he felt like like such an honest portrayal of someone who is like really trying to make something work and really getting set back in a lot of ways and being yeah. being like like struggling to to make it struggling to make his his family make it and make this this project of his um work and you know and and you get the sense throughout that like the the wife obviously is not having it mm-hmm. <laughs> not <laughs> interested mm-hmm. in in being there and living this life um but is is very um I don't know. The tension feels so like natural um, mm-hmm. and so real. The, 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 yeah, the movie. I, I thought it was really a, a great uh, feat of of the director Lee Isaac Chung. Is is the um, it feels like sort of a slice of life, and it feels like it's kind of not like it's going nowhere, but it feels very. Um, it's it's. It doesn't feel like there's a, a plot mechanic moving it forward, but the movie is incredibly compelling. It's not yeah. like you're just like boring watching people farming and, you know, going to church with it. Like it's not, it's not boring at all. There's always, there's an internal drama there. And that I think is missing for the, when we talk about some of these movies, like, like Roma or Nomad, like movies where it's like, tries to be a slice of life or a memory piece or something, but fails at kind of being compelling. Yeah. But this was incredibly, there's so much going on between the mother and the father in this movie and the dynamic that, that that changes as it, as it goes along, and and same with the grandmother and the the grandson. It's just like be- beautiful um, between them. And um, that yeah, that arc is like is so sweet and so amazing. And like yeah. the end, oh, yeah. you know that that sort of sequence in the end um, is just like very, it's very touching. Um, the the connection between those yeah. characters. Yeah, I'm getting a little. A little emotional just thinking about it. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it really, it really, really works. Like, it really works well. Um, I would also say, out of the best picture nominees, it's it's not only one of the best ones, but I think it's by far the the most like, um, I don't know, like one that mo- won't make you want to kill yourself, you know, watching it because <laughs> I mean, like, like as great as like the father is, like, god damn, that's a depressing movie. Yeah, and, yeah, and even even like Sound of Metal, which you know is not you know tries to sort of like talk about you know fine being able to move on from you know lo- losing your hearing like that and going deaf it's it's um yeah obviously you know pretty grim situation and there's there's serious stuff that happens in minari but i think it's it's a very warm and not like it it, it won't like ruin your night i guess watching it yeah uh, not that the father will ruin your night but it's you know it's, you're you're in a little bit of a different zone with that movie yeah, I, yeah, I like. I was, I was, I, it was one I was really. It's not like I was hoping to not like it, but I was kind of like Minari. Like I was like, oh, everyone says Minari's so good. Oh, I bet it's really good because like there's always these movies where it's like you're supposed to like it because it's like important and people always people get like really it's a little hypocritical because now we're talking. I'm talking about the Asianness of the movie, but um, but there is a thing with movies about people of color where people get kind of patronizing about it of like. Oh, it's so important. You know, I, I Moonlight was like, I mean, like Moonlight is like, it's like an amazing movie, and everyone talking about it. It felt like someone was talking about that on Twitter recently. How how ever how before he saw Moonlight, he thought it was just a fake. He thought it was like this movie's not gonna be good because <laughs> everyone is everyone who's talking about it is just like bullshitting. Yeah, um, yeah, and then it's like, oh no, wait, it actually is good. But people just don't seem to know how to talk about these movies, or you know, a lot of critics are white. Maybe it's just like there's like a you know, like you feel like you have to overcompensate or something. But um, no, it was a very pleasant surprise to find that it was actually good just a pretty wonderful movie yeah um yeah i guess not wonderful enough to put on my list but maybe <laughs> it might be one that will get higher for me i don't know shall i go to number three then do it okay my number three and this maybe could you know, change your soul i don't know but is is let them all talk which is uh steven soderbergh's film which um this guy man 
this he makes like one or two movies every year and you know i would say since at least since magic mike maybe even since like ocean's 11 people just like it's like they take him for granted like no one sees these <laughs> movies no one cares and um in this one it just went up on hbo max with like no fanfare and it's but it's funny because like all these movies like some of them sometimes he misses you know like laundromat was not super great um but let them all talk which is basically a movie that he conceived with um as a writer named deborah eisenberg but also with meryl streep who he never worked with and he went with her and um it's a movie about this woman who basically goes on a cruise ship across the atlantic with her two friends from college you know like 50 years ago or something and her um her nephew who's played by wonderful lucas hedges and also her um uh, someone who works for her publisher is also coming along and basically with these five actors on this cruise ship they really just took this cruise regular cruise ship across and soderbergh just shot it with you know like people he just had people uh passengers guests sign up as extras and they're just like oh we can be in the movie sure you know and the movie was structured and there are definitely things in place but it's largely improvised and it's largely sort of, you know, let, letting the actors, you know, um, they know what the scene's going to be about, but they fill in what they actually say. This is one of those movies. I don't really know if it's like a, like a, Oh my God, like an amazing movie. It's a very low key movie, but when I saw it, especially the second time I watched it, it's just so enjoyable. It's just the, the rapport these women have with each other. It's it's Diane Weist and Candace Bergen getting probably like the best roles they've had in like 30, you know, probably Diane Weist's best role since she was working with Woody Allen, you know. And it's just, it's so funny. And and the rapport between them and like the kind of, you know, the, the, the tense dynamics that have like been through these relationships for their entire lives, like still sort of coming out and grudges being held. Um, it's just it's so much fun and Soderbergh is he's just he's just so economical and 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 sharp as a director and 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 he shoots his movies and he edits them too and yeah and um like I just remembered like for the first time I saw that just the scene when they board the ship you know just a functional scene is like one of the most thrilling things I've seen in, in last year largely helped by a brilliant um sort of jazz score uncharacteristically jazz score by thomas newman um wonderful just like a rhythm of this sequence and um and then like lucas hedges is so brilliant in the movie i think i think maybe even more brilliant than meryl streep who is kind of a little bit enigmatic in the movie and she's like the main character but also kind of like the she sort of hovers over the whole movie and it's like people talking about her Mm -hmm. and like how do we get her to write her book and um yeah so so you get lucas hedges and also the and the the woman who is sort of stowing away on the ship who works for the publisher who's played by gemma chan who up to this point i just like she's just always in movies with just nothing to do and i just was like gemma chan and i don't know who really cares about her (laughs) and then you're like wow she's just been completely wasted by you know uh, mary queen of scots and crazy rich asians and all these movies where she captain marvel where she just gets nothing and she's brilliant actress and um, and she, this, the, the dynamic between her and Lucas Hedges is, is, is so great and, and just devastating and so funny. Um, I also think that in some ways, and I, it's weird to be quoting David Ehrlich cause I don't read his criticism or anything. I really just watch his video. I love his videos, but I not like I read him that much, but I saw him say something about this movie that really like, in some ways like locks in, uh, I think part of what this movie is about which is that he said it's a movie about he soderbergh is making a movie about his friend david fincher because <laughs> meryl streep in the movie is this perfectionistic writer who won't make another book and she's like she's like puzzling over at the exact structure and that one of the great things in the movie is she meets this other writer on the ship who everyone really likes because he just he writes like a novel every year and he just does all this stuff and and like everyone loves it but he and she's just like thinks it's you know just pulp nonsense and they're just crime novels and and her friends are like oh but there's so entertaining the, the plots are so compelling and she's like but the prose is just terrible and and I, I think it's also just hilarious that it comes out this year i think like probably one of my favorite soderbergh movies like maybe his best movie since maybe since ocean's 11 actually um 
and, and then and it's just like some movie he tossed off not tossed off but like you know improvised yeah, on a cruise yeah. ship and then david fincher makes probably like his worst movie ever <laughs> in the same year uh, it's pretty funny but um you know no disrespect obviously i love fincher but um yeah it's it's just such a it's it's such a fun movie and and ultimately like um as as much as it feels sort of breezy, I, it it feels like it's about something a little bit deeper with the relationship between the the nephew and the older woman. And I, something he talked about was trying to get the honesty of the way young people talk to old people, which I really I think it, you know I think in so many movies in so many movies it's like it's like there's sort of a either a condescending thing or it's sort of like a joke thing like this person is on social media and this person doesn't right, know how right, to use right. social media like it, it ends up being just very cliche and um you feel like he really achieved his goal of making it feel the way like the way I, it's like it reminds me of how i talk to like nancy or the way i talk to like my friends from stanford where there is like it's not it, it is different than talking to your contemporaries but it's also um there's a sort of like a warmth to it and it feels a little bit different than um, what you normally see in movies. So yeah, anyway, again, I've gone on way too long, but I, I really, I, this movie is delightful. I get, pisses me off these movies. You can't get them on Blu-ray too. Like all of these. Mm, yeah. The streaming ones. Yeah. Yeah. And it's on HBO though, right? HBO. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I should watch that. I, I, you'd, I honestly think you'd probably watch it. You just go, this is pretty good. Like my, most of my family just are like, it was good. I don't know what <laughs> you're talking about, but it's, it's pretty good. It's fun. But I mean, I don't know. I think it's just hilarious mm. and, and delightful. Um, well, and also Meryl Streep, who I sometimes like, I'm like, Oh, Meryl Streep overrated, but like, she's, she's so great. Yeah. Um, my number three is Bad Education, which we already talked about. Mm-hmm. So you can move on to your number three. Oh, um, or my, my number two, um, which is On the Rocks. Which is that your number which two? Which is my number two, yeah. Oh, how wonderful. Okay. Wow. Oh, Synergy. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. I was almost, it was, it was my number one until like five days ago, probably. Yeah. I mean, um, it's not like a staggering, you know, number one compared to like the last few masterpieces or, or number two rather. Um, but it's it's a, it's it's really a beautiful movie. Yeah, I'm glad you really like it because I was not sure. That's another one like Let Them All Talk where it feels like a lot of people sort of dismissed it or could dismiss it as just oh this is, you know minor work, kind of a low key thing, but. It feels again like something. She's getting at something a lot more interesting than just like, oh, just you know, fun to hang out with Bill Murray. You know, I don't know. totally. Yeah. Well, and I the thing that I loved about it is like you don't see a lot of movies about sort of like a daughter and a dad in their like adult age. You know, yeah. it's it's a very like it's not a movie that you see all the time. Um, first and foremost, um, about these these two characters who are like. Kind they're they're kind of interesting on their own in terms of I mean she I guess she's not really she's kind of boring um, but, but but sort of by yes the, by the yes point of the exactly movie, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and he's kind of this wistful um, carefree but also almost like dangerous um, figure in, in in her life yeah certainly yeah a little bit um, yeah. well not I don't know like dangerous but def but definitely like um, her, her feeling about him is very complex. Yeah, because yeah. her life has become boring by motherhood, you know, and and just the you know you know being in your forties and just sort of like I, I love the details of this movie, like like the Bernie Sanders sticker in her in her uh, apartment, or you know things you see from maybe when she was like a little bit younger, you know things that feel like the the details of someone who is you know someone who's younger who sort of aged out of that yeah time in your life I yeah guess. um i i just find their dynamic to be really fun in this movie too mm-hmm. um so anytime they're both on screen it's it's really enjoyable you know mm-hmm. um bill murray i think he he totally i mean it's it's definitely one of my favorite roles of his mm. in the past i don't know since it, it, since it, Lost in Translation, it, it, it maybe? could be best yeah. since Lost in Translation. Um, he's, he's astounding in this movie. Yeah, he's he's so good, and he he seems like um, 
I don't know. It's like almost a knife's edge in terms of like like which way he could go at any moment. You know, like his mm-hmm. his comments are both hilarious and um, offensive at the same time. Yeah, and, yeah. And, you in know, like a good natured way, but you're like a little bit like. You can imagine if he was your own dad, you'd be like, "Oh God!" You know. Uh, but, he he, but li- he yeah. reminded me a lot of my grandpa, but much more. Oh, really? Um, much, uh, much more clever. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Interesting. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. He had he had a bit of like class and charm to him too. That is uh-huh. like it's kind of unique for a role like that. Uh-huh. Um, I don't know. I just I found him to be like really electric on screen. And the shenanigans and him, you know, riding around in that car. Very funny movie, too. Yeah. Did I tell you about when I watched the movie, too? No. I watched the movie. I watched on election night three (laughs) Sofia Coppola movies. And this one I started, like, at one in the morning. Mm. I was like, maybe I'll watch some of it. And I was just, like, completely charmed by it. It was a wonderful way. I feel like, like, it's like election night. There's something a little sadomasochistic about people who are just, like, (laughs) you know, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I was, like, probably checking the numbers between movies, but, but... it was nice to be sort of in the world of, of Sophia and um, and I really think this is like one of her best movies. I mean, yeah. probably my favorite since Lost in Translation. I mean, and I like a lot of, like, I really like The Beguiled and Somewhere and even Marie Antoinette is pretty good. I mean, she's really, I think maybe I just, like, I saw Lost in Translation and I then I jumped in when she was in the bling ring, very Merry Christmas period. Where I was like, maybe she's just 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 one, and you know that's it. Right, you know? right, right, right. Uh, and uh, and you know, and then the beguiled was was great, but you felt a little. I still was like, you know, maybe you know her time has passed or what? Like it, like it's some ridiculous. But it's like this year that then getting to see this you know fall or summer seeing Virgin Suicides, which is like amazing. And then these other movies, you're like, no, no, no. She's like still one of the best directors working right now. And this is really, I mean, I hope I I wish you'd just make a movie with Bill Murray every year because it, it's such a it's, what a great pairing. Yeah. Um. I mean, he's and he's in so many movies, and you're just like, oh, it's Bill Murray. It's fun. But this, it's like there's something just like if you're right about that, like the edge to him of like you're a little bit. And I think that's also another sticking point for some people is you just some people just watch it and they're just like annoyed by it. Probably like reminds you if you have a dad who's yeah, like that. I'm sure it does, um, which is effective. But and, I mean. no, it's it's very effective. And, and I, but for me, it's a it's a big like a lot of the two sided thing where I I think he's incredibly charming. And and it's interesting because when she talks about the movie, she sort of talks about it in terms of. Like she, you know, Rashia Jones is a stick up her ass, and and Bill Murray is like fun loving and like trying to like you know, I'm I'm sure you know obviously by the end of the movie you realize it's it's more complex than that, but I think yeah you know, she loves Bill Murray so much and probably you know I think this is a personal movie for her I, I'm sure there's some connection sure. to her, you know she has a, definitely has a father with a big personality yeah so I think there's there's a little bit of that there and but that combination of the affection with the kind of like you know being uncertain about these things. It makes it more compelling to watch than just like, you know, just like sort of improv comedy or whatever. It sort of could. I'm sure there's a lot of off the cuff Bill Murray stuff. What I thought was interesting was the did did you find the sort of plot of, you know, like the main like plot of the movie about the husband cheating and them like spying on him? Is like a little silly, you know. Like it's like it feels almost like some, like a Billy Wilder movie or something. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's true. I was actually thinking about that um, when yeah. I watched it. Um, no, well, what what I found was kind of interesting was um, <laughs> it was very like uh, it was very pleasant. I I guess can we spoil it? Uh, well, just just what else? Just say what you. It was ple- the ending. I mean, or I just mean like the the conclusion of of sort of the dramatic arc of the movie uh-huh. was very pleasant in that you don't see that very often in like comedies. You know, you don't you don't get sort of a a healthy but we're just going through a rough patch relationship like you never see uh, here's what i'll say you never see like a straightforward like honest relationship in movies very very often it's like it's like there's something wrong there's always you know there's infidelity or there's things going on there's Um, still an acknowledgement that that something is is i mean we're sort of in the spoiler so we can just say that, that there's sort of a acknowledgement that the um even though he's not cheating on her the relationship is there's something like it's just off it's just off and and yeah. off in the way that it's just because of 
getting older and having jobs and being a little distracted. That's sort of what it is. It doesn't it doesn't make it just like, oh, the guy is a bad guy or like the husband is cheating or it's like everything is great. And I think maybe that's maybe some people the temptation like again like Mike and Jay were very dismissive of this movie because it's sort of just like you could kind of just be like oh nothing happens he wasn't cheating but it's like yeah but it's still there's you know there's there's something off in it there's something you know it's it's more just about the dissatisfaction of being middle aged and, and, and being a cool young person and jumping in the pool when you're getting married to being just like you know I, 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 there's like a whole sequence where she shows her with her label maker and it's like so mundane and just gray <laughs> and you're like oh god and, um, and the the friend character who's always just droning on oh about, my god. about nothing oh my and god. It, it's just so that funny is, um, Jenny Slate oh my god it's just so, home so run funny. every time she's on screen um, yeah I forgot about that yeah and it's so it's sort of what I was getting to about the the father the 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 you know discovery or whatever being kind of silly is that it to me it it feels that's not a flaw of the movie it feels like it's it's almost like the two of them are receding back into like trying to recreate the kind of like f- silly games you play as Mischief. like yeah, yeah be, as a parent and a child yeah. you know and it, we sort of like yearn for almost and it's like neither of them are you know is this conscious but it feels you know like because it definitely really feels even between them like it's that serious and they don't really right, seriously right, believe right, it right, but right. it's just like it's an excuse to hang out and have this kind of like you know inject some sort of fun into your life and the movie is about sort of the acceptance of having to grow up and mo- and move. And I think the ending beautifully sort of illustrates that. And the whole thing with a watch really like does that very simply. I, I didn't think I got that the first time, but it's like, you to- it totally like seals that idea just so beautifully. And um, I don't know. It's also just like really beautiful movie for, for being just like a low key people yeah. in New-, <laughs> New York talking in rooms movie. Um, like Lesur, it's like, I mean, it's the guy who shot the beguiled, and it and it's. I think it's also on film, and mm. it's it's gorgeous. Yeah, it looks it looks really interesting. Um, it has a very distinctive like um, modern New York vibe in the mm. way that like something like Manhattan would have. You know, like it really yeah. reminded me of a Woody Allen movie. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. It reminded me of that sort of like playfulness. You know, because Woody Allen movies are, I guess, the ones that I've seen. Mm-hmm. Um, they're they're fun. Uh, but they're not like you know, like door busters comedy, like laughing oh, the whole yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're 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 fun. They have funny moments, um, but they're not like you know comedies as you would think of them. Mm-hmm, sure. um, they're much more people talking in rooms kind of kind of movies. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, and, the ones, yeah, yeah, the the seventies and eighties ones. Uh, yeah. And, and this this movie had that same feeling for me, where I was like. I, you are, wow, I just like enjoy watching these people, you know, yeah, I just it's, enjoy it's great... watching this, this interaction and this character sort of grow in a way. She and... lets, I mean, it's like totally like talking about the opposite of what I was complaining about a nomad land. Like she really just lets the scenes breathe and like, yeah, like that scene where it, I, I think they're at the, the Carlisle and, and they're sitting in the bar. It's the poster, you know, the movie mm-hmm. and she's drinking and, and um, just like, just like, it's so laid back. It was such a, like a, just like a great such a great antidote to what was going on on election night like just like the frenzy of all this fucking nonsense to be watching this like just beautiful slow gentle movie and i, I love at the end of that scene doesn't her tear drop into the into yeah the, i think glass? It does. yeah it's like, oh my god she's just so good man and yeah. and um the two moment two scenes i also want to mention quickly are the I love the scene with the cop where where he gets pulled over. Love it. It's amazing. Bill Murray, man. Oh, my God. Actually, three scenes. The other one was also where he... There's a scene where he talks about his wife when they're in, like, a way, and, you know, he he gets kind of emotional. Like, that was... Bill Murray really should have been nominated this year. I agree. I agree. Totally. Maybe he probably should have won, honestly. I mean, I like Kaluuya, but he probably should have won. Um, he He should have won for Lost in Translation, probably. And and then there's just like a small moment I really love where um, I think it's the first time he's hung out with her and then he he she goes into her apartment and he, he's like he tells the driver just go back home and this that Schubert the Schubert impromptu comes in and it's sort of and it's like shots of New York and it's just such a simple like little moment but it's like it creates such a feeling of like 
the 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 sense of like having this connection with another person and being like you know having this life injected in that sort of like ebbing away and the sense of like the loneliness of that's even as his sort of goofy front of his personality yeah it's like that loneliness that's underneath and it was just like such a beautiful beautiful little scene yeah yeah no i i really really like this movie um i'm glad you did i was this is another one i thought you'd be like <laughs> okay you know pretty good but yeah <laughs> it's uh yeah it's it's definitely definitely one of her best i would say yeah um all right anything else it's, okay no okay so i'm gonna do my number one first just because uh we've both seen your number one i think so um my number one is a movie called another round which is a uh a, a, a very recently i saw this uh, a danish movie by thomas vinterberg who i really think i have just like completely under respected in these last few because i've always you know i he did a movie called the celebration he was in the dogma movement him and von trier mm. like started the dogma movement and the celebration is just like you know obviously looks horrible because it's like dogma and uh but it's a brilliant movie about where this guy yeah, yeah, he's at a, his father's birthday party and he he tells the whole family the father molested him or something or raped him or that and it's um it's just great and I haven't seen like every movie. He made a movie called The Hunt, which a lot of people have seen with Matt Smith. With Matt Smith, I know yeah, everyone, I everyone talks it. about that being really great, and for whatever reason, I just missed it. But um, yeah, he made a really good movie called The Command a couple of years ago, which is about the uh, the Kursk submarine disaster. You know, the ship that was like stuck at the bottom of the ocean, and um, a more straightforward thrill. I mean, he's he's sort of like. His movies have different, like, looks to them. You don't really... He's not, like, super um, uh, distinctive in terms of, like, oh, this is the Thomas Vinterberg aesthetic, you know? But um, this movie... I don't know if it's... It may be his best movie. Uh, certainly his most enjoyable movie. It's about four um, teachers at this high school who decide that um, they... they, they come up with this they they learn about this i think just completely bullshit theory that humans are born with less alcohol in their body than they should have so they're like why don't we just have be slightly drunk the entire time we're at work and really just our whole day like let's just see if we can sustain it and they're like oh it's totally scientific and we're not alcoholics because this is our decision and it's, it's science and um it's as funny and even more funny than you know you would expect with that premise but it's also just like I found it extraordinarily. Um, it's like a very like life affirming movie and and deeply moving. Mads Mikkelsen um, in this movie um, is so he's so dead at the beginning of the movie. Like that's part of this sort of what is the movie is about is him sort of like opening himself up again as as you know he's. Apparently he's in his fifties. He looks great for a guy in his fifties. Yeah, but he's, he does. <laughs> he's he's like you see him in this movie, and it's like every time he he would he he has no passion in his life with his family, with his class. His class literally like sets up a meeting with the parents, basically to tell him that like they they might need to switch him as a teacher because he's so boring <laughs> that they're gonna like uh, there's gonna they're gonna fail their exams because they just can't pay attention to his lessons and every every obstacle or whatever annoyance he comes into contact with in his life he just sort of like responds to it this very like like sort of like choked or not choked but like um brisk like he says okay and, and he, he's just like okay all right like it's like this very um every time he said it i i felt like oh god because it, it was just such like the the demeanor of of just such a miserable person and such not not well not even miserable just this is a person who's like lost any sense of joy in his life mm. and then there's this wonderful so the scene where they talk he's hanging out with the other teachers and they're talking about this theory and there um he he drinks a little bit and and it's he's it's such a brilliant performance he, he gets like a, he like tears in his eyes and he starts talking about you know uh, like what's happened to him in his life and and they are sort of like it, it's such a, it's also just like such a great like guy friends movie too because <laughs> yeah, they're like yeah. trying to like cheer him up and like give him this idea and whatever and and um and seeing his progression of you know uh 
from from this from this sort of deadness to you know sort of waking up again in his life is 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 so wonderful and also and you know I have to say, I mean, if, you, if you're an alcoholic, it's probably a dangerous movie to watch because, I mean, <laughs> I have never more thought maybe I should drink than watching this movie because it's there are parts of it that are just so fun. Um, there's a scene where they put on the sissy strut by the meters and they start dancing and then they then and they get like they, they're drinking. What is it called? Like Sazerac? Is that what it's called? A Sazerac. It's, yeah, it's a cocktail. Yeah, and they're drinking like Sazeracs, and they're and then and then it cuts to them going to shop for codfish because when their wives told them to, and they're in the grocery store just like stumbling about, <laughs> and it's like, oh my god. But but on the other hand, the movie is not does not like pull punches about the seriousness of this as well it's not just like oh this is so wonderful and yeah because yeah. also other than just being dishonest it would be pretty you know uh you know pretty one note movie if it was just that as fun as it is um but it also never feels it doesn't feel didactic either it's sort of like the way when you watch goodfellas you know you mm. get seduced by the world and then you're also but it never feels like you're going like this is bad don't do this you know it's it's just very honest and um and builds to um, one of the best, maybe, I don't know if it's the best. I really love the, the quiet ending of Red, White, and Blue. But one of the best climactic sequences of the year. I, I'm, and I'm assuming you haven't seen it. Seen the this- ending? Because the ending is like spoiled. It's on the posters, in the trailer, and oh, it's really? in Earlick's video. He, his entire section is just the ending. And I'm like, thanks for spoiling the movie. But even with it being spoiled, it's... Uh, it was still great. Hmm. And um, yeah, Vinterberg is, he's nominated for a foreign language film. And then he's one of these weird nominees where in this like new, where it's 10 movies where um, he's nominated for best director, even though he's not for best picture. And it's a great travesty because it's, it's better than, it's so much better than any of these movies. Hmm. Um, And obviously he's not going to win best director. It's going to go to Chloe Zhao and like, Oh God. But um, you know, you know, that's the thing that sucks about foreign language film. You don't get the Oscar. Did you know this? You don't get Best Picture? No, no, no. If you win oh. an Oscar for foreign film, you don't get the Oscar. What? The really? country gets it. What? <laughs> it's like just the most horse shit thing I've ever seen. So like Bong Joon, because I was looking at Bong, I was like, it, it, three Oscars, it says on I or yeah, three Oscars, it says on IMDb. And I'm like, Wait, he won for foreign language film. What what is this about? But it's like no, it goes to Korea or whatever. And it's like okay, it's fine. It's Bong because he won like three yeah, others. Yeah, but that fucking, is super it weird. Sucks that if is you're just like you know, like Pavlikovsky or this guy where yeah. it's like you just don't get it. Like fuck, what a disgrace. But yeah, you know whatever. Oscars, who cares? Um, <laughs> It's a wonderful movie. It's a movie I love. I almost would say don't watch it because I'm seriously thinking about like getting maybe even for my birthday getting the boys my stan the stanford boy uh, there's some ladies too now and uh uh and uh, you and ad getting everyone together and watching this movie are we gonna rock a buzz the whole time i the, i not me but uh <laughs> yeah i don't need it you know but uh it, it's such a great you know it, it's 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 great it's a it's a perfect like you know it confluence of like um, a movie that's like serious and it, you know it's like you know uh, just a great powerful movie mm. and also being a great crowd pleaser to me like great fun to watch um, so that's that's my number one uh, yeah on the other hand if, in terms of crowd pleaser <laughs> if Cameron's number one <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't say a, cl- a crowd pleaser at all. No, not um, at it all. is very a crowd um, commit suicide. No, film. no, no. Come yeah. on, come on. Let's be charitable. Well, here, I mean, Jesus. I don't mean to be not no not a particular movie. The movie's wonderful. But. Yeah, um, the father for me, I think, is the only movie that I could come out of this year saying like this is a this is just like an excellent film. Hmm. Um, it's really the one that that. Uh, I think probably would hold up um, to to some other years for mm-hmm. me. Um, I just I love the form, the craftsmanship, and it, it's very clear that this is a story that has been sort of um, ruminating in the director's head for a long mm-hmm. time. He it's based on a play, another first time director. Yeah, he exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, it's ba- but it's based on a play that he wrote and yeah. directed. Yeah. Um, and- 
to, to, to explain briefly, it's about a man who's who is experiencing early stages of dementia and his daughter taking care of him. But it's done in a way that is... I would explain it. It's, it's like a sort of you're you're trying to get at the subjective experience. Yeah, it's. Sure. I would say it's it's like almost experimental. Um, it's mm-hmm. it's potentially a movie that I would show in like if I was like teaching an experimental class, I would show this as like an introduction into what what mm-hmm. you could do with your experimental film. Sure, sure. Um, because it's super it's super understandable in what you're what you're experiencing you know like the reason why you're why you're seeing things switch around and the timeline is being uh, totally messed with and mm-hmm. you know in a, in a and location is being yeah together yeah in a way that is totally different from i'm thinking of ending things mm-hmm. which is like you know just off the rails yeah um but th- this movie is very much like you understand what's what why this is happening why this is going through it, and i think and there's movie, a power in it gets that. at it more than th- that one which sometimes it feels really powerful and sometimes it feels a little just like weird for the sake of weird but this everything he's doing in terms of i mean we didn't mention he recasts the characters yeah which is real i don't know if i've ever seen something like that where yeah me neither he, to show that the the losing you know your familiarity losing you know your memory of a person he, he that he recasts the daughter that's brilliant to who he cast because it's, I always get Olivia Williams and Olivia <laughs> Coleman confused in real life anyway. <laughs> and so you're like, oh, what is Olivia Williams? And uh, yeah, that's. Uh, it's it's kind of funny a, because it's almost like the cast of this movie itself is a spoiler. Um, you know what I mean? It's like the, one of the rare movies where it's. Well, maybe this in like um, Interstellar, you know? <laughs> oh, you mean like because you're like, oh, someone, when is this person going to show up? Or you mean, yeah, yeah. yeah in, in, in that way where it's like going into for me going into it all i knew was it was um olivia coleman and uh and anthony hopkins mm-hmm. um and yeah when the credits rolled at the beginning i was like hey Imogen poots is in the movie Hell yeah exactly yeah. Yeah. yeah um and and so i was like i you know going into it that's all i knew um and the way that it it sort of twists and turns is like it's so shocking and uh disturbing yeah. in a way yeah but it's also uh, it's it's so like pinpoint accurate too you know it's like it's yeah. like you know exactly where it's where you know that arrow is flying mm-hmm. um and it's so you it's like a, it's like a tr- it's like a, a train wreck in a lot of ways you're like you're like oh my goodness like i want like i want to stop this from like yeah. falling and, yeah. and you know descending into the into sort of complete forgetfulness and and I, I think it's made even more powerful by not just hopkins being obviously like amazing in the movie but just the the casting of him is 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 powerful because he's a person who for you know however long he's been out over 50 years probably you he's like the pinnacle of of strength and power and yeah. like he's like yeah. one of the most intimidating presences in any movie and seeing a person with that much vitality and that you have that association with breaking down is you know i mean it would be heartbreaking whoever it is but it but it's the it's almost like it's you have the association almost like the daughter has with him of like yeah. knowing him in his prime you know and, and also he is yeah. still scary in this movie you yeah know? no like when he yells you're like oh fuck yeah like yeah. it's like it is scary yeah um and and he he i i want to get into his performance because i think it yeah. is like the um i mean it's one of my favorite performances of anybody in a long time it's yeah. it is so um moving and powerful and um funny and disturbing and it's like it is all of these things wrapped up into one's person one person's like last couple months of mm-hmm. their lives and yeah. it is so um by the end you're just left like devastated it's <laughs> it's oh a god. horrifying oh my god i'm glad you said movie. funny by the way though because because he is funny in certain scenes. i mean even sometimes when it's like it's kind of sad it's also like you know his confusion about the watch is sometimes like funny and and he has a sense of humor about things and also just like um, the way he like turns on the charm, like when he sees like the pretty young, uh, you know, um, you know, a uh, caregiver, he, you know, he sort of turns on, he says he's like a tap dancer or whatever. Yeah. Right? It's like, it's very sweet. And, and, um, you know, and then like, it, and then in that same scene, it turns to the, like, and he's yelling at them and it's like, oh my God. And also the, the like, 
this is a weird thing he, the director does where it's like he he creates these like loops in the movie where it's like you know like scenes like loop back to where you saw them and it's like i, I don't know if it, how to explain exactly what the effect of that is like is, i guess it's like a sense of deja vu maybe or yeah. a sense of like yeah you feel like it's familiar but you can't put your finger on it and um it's it's such a like a just a really brilliantly thought out portrayal of the, that condition um Olivia Coleman too is, is, is really wonderful. Yeah, in, um, in you know really heartbreaking way because she's you know she's watching this all happen and you know and mm-hmm. there there are moments in the movie that like I don't know I guess I guess what I can say is like the movie kept me guessing the whole time even though I knew where it was going mm-hmm. um, and and it, it was so impressive I was sh- I was shocked at like whenever they would. Um, you know, she, she would walk in somewhere, or she would she would reference something um, before it happened, or you know, she would she things would happen out of sequence, and and you'd like you'd get the the sort of reverberation of that, and then things would jump where you know he walks out and he's like, we were just talking about this, mm-hmm. and you know, and it was so. Um, it was so unsettling uh, mm-hmm. in a lot of ways. Like it was very, it it, it left me feeling um, similar to something like Hereditary, where mm-hmm. um, not in the horror sense, but it's very much like, um, like devastating in in how real something like that could be. You know? Yeah. What do you think about? I, I might. This is sort of spoilers, but I might just cut it. But the. Um, what do you think about the scene where where he starts hitting him? That was like crazy when that you know it was, yeah, it was very strange. Um, but but I was well, two things. One one is like, how did you interpret the reality of that scene? Like, did to me, I'm like, is he literally hitting him, or is it like an expression of his confusion? Or um, yeah, I don't know. I because I can't. I, you, I don't, I don't think I could pinpoint like what was actually happening in the movie and what was not. Right. right. Um, which I guess it probably is part of the point. Um, of for me, that that scene just identified how um, how terrible the husband character is and how fed up he is with the situation. Which, mm-hmm. which I think kind of is the point more than anything. Which is yeah, he, yeah. It felt to me, to me, like it, him literally hitting him. I don't know if that was like a little bit. I don't know. I mean, it, this could just be a little bit like you know, like the, like the Rex like falling into the, the the pit in Toy Story three thing for me, where I just like <laughs> it's too. It was like it was like that was like upsetting. Like I actually like felt like like upset watching that. And if but to me, it felt like a little bit like I don't know, like it's a little manipulative maybe because it's like oh yeah, like you, know, you show anyone hitting an old man, it's just like kind of cruel. And you know, I don't know if it's like a too dramatic or not i mean it's a powerful moment i mean it's like just it's a a shocking moment i don't know if i if i'm saying that's like a problem or not but i I had sort of i guess sort of complex feelings about about that moment um yeah i don't know maybe maybe i'm underrating this movie because as we're talking about like gee where did this movie go in my top 10 maybe that should have been should have been up there because it's uh it's 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 a really powerful thing i mean i just i don't know there are just certain movies where I, I watch it. I'm like, oh, this is more just like very good rather than. Um, great. I mean, you can you can see that it's not like it's a work of a first time director, um, and you know, then that's okay. It wasn't it wasn't like a film of like dazzling craftsmanship, but but the originality of it and the ultimate power of it is really, um, really devastating. And oh god, the last scene in that movie. Oh yeah, I mean, I was I was weeping. Oh it was my god. it's. <laughs> Jesus it's Christ. it's a horrifyingly sad moment, you know, yeah. and and to see, like you said, you know, to see sort of this imposing, powerful figure who even just outside of the context, you know, within the context of the movie is sort of this imposing force in people's lives. Um, to see that breakdown and him asking for his mom is oh, just, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's just... Like, Ugh. if that doesn't break your heart and twist you up, like, yeah, I, don't I, don't, know. Yeah. I don't know what, I don't know what you're doing. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, what would I, I, this is probably the best one in, in, in movies of it, 2020. 
of their of the best Oscar perf- movie. Best performance. Oh, best performance. Yeah, and, and no, I, actually, 100. in terms of best pictures, it probably is my favorite. Um, yeah, no, I, definitely I, performance. I agree. I I think. I mean, it was just it was a. I mean, and it, it, Anthony Hopkins. I mean, he's. He's no slouch when it comes to to putting in great performances, obviously. But it's one of my favorite of his. Of, of yeah, I was. I remember when I was watching. I was like, if I, if Cameron doesn't see this movie, and I say this is Anthony Hopkins' best performance. He's gonna say, yeah, sure. I mean, Science but of the but, lambs, it, but but yeah. but it uh, I maybe might be. It, it might be. I mean, he's just he's. I, it's a little different though because he's obviously like in that movie. It's it's very brief what you see of him. Mm-hmm. Um, and that adds to his like scary element, but he's like the center. He's but. the centerpiece of this movie in a lot of ways. Um, mm-hmm. Also, we got, also got to give a shout out to Titus because that's just an awesome, awesome Anthony Hopkins movie and performance. But no one has seen Titus. So no <laughs> one cares about Julie Taymor, sadly. <laughs> I don't know. Do we have any further thoughts about the father? No, I just. I mean. I would recommend everybody go see it. It's so good. Yeah, wherever you can, you know, or or you know, if you have to wait, whatever, till it goes down to five bucks, you know. That's I okay. guess maybe we just said that it was depressing and terrible. Well, that's well, that's not a good selling point. Of yeah, but movie. it's also but it is beautiful and it know, is wonderfully well made. Something I mean, you is, you won't forget, and um, it's it's a, you know, I don't know. When we're talking about these movies, it's like yeah, maybe it wasn't. It's still it's still weak when you compare it to like the just like one great film after another. Yeah, in our top ten of last last year, year. I didn't I realized I didn't even have like Richard Jewell in last year by the when we did our top ten. I know, I guess I not. Like, <laughs> well, it would be like top five, but as I said, I wish Clint had released it in twenty twenty. That it would be the number one. <laughs> He'd have number one. But anyway. Um, Okay, well, let's so let's uh, just to run down our list again. What's your list? My list is Judas and the Black Messiah, Mank, Color Out of Space, Palm Springs, The Invisible Man, I'm Thinking of Ending Things, Minari, Bad Education, On the Rocks, and The Father. All right, and then my list from 10 to 1 is. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me. Uh, uh, my list from 10 to 1 is The Invisible Man, The Assistant, Red, White, and Blue, uh, Shit House, Bad Education, Relic, Soul, Let Them All Talk, On the Rocks, and Another Round. But I'm but The Father and Minar, and now we were talking about these, I'm like, these are close movies. These are all, you know, these are all contenders. Um, I don't know. This is like sort of an awkward ending. I don't know if we have any further <laughs> thoughts about this. We've been talking about this for how long? Like uh, three three and a half hours. Really? Yeah. Fuck me. Oh, God. Um, but, well, it's nice to be back and talking to you about movies. I know. It we haven't recorded. Feels... I mean, I guess we recorded our thing for your podcast, but th- even that was kind of a while ago, too, so... And we were not in the same place, so it's different. Yeah, and it's the first time in place since... Whenever we did the Five Bloods, one. no, no, of us talked about the Five Bloods. I'm shocked. Uh, <laughs> that movie was shit. Oh come on! It was better than some movie on your list, Cameron. I'm not gonna lie. It was better than. Uh, it's better. Than, I would say it's better than Judas and Mank. <laughs> it was. I think it was. There were more memorable. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I don't remember anything about that movie. So. Delroy Lindo on the boat. Like, come on, man. I don't know. Delroy Lindo should have been nominated. By the way, he really was. That was a, that was a bummer to not see him get get his due, but in any case, anyway, uh, yeah. Well, that that's uh, I don't have a conclusion for my show. Ever. No, that's usually not. that's the problem is is usually the conclusion is us saying goodbye on Zoom, but since we're not on Zoom, uh, well, we're gonna eat dinner. We'll so. simply bid the listener. We're gonna say farewell, goodbye, and an adieu. Take